There's no time. clock hey you guys happy friday it is friday isn't it yeah i'm yep. so i'm so <laughs> i'm so not knowing what day it is <laughs> show can be about unit 731 if you guys don't know what that is it was a uh, japanese world war ii uh, experimental unit that experimented on humans this uh, is going to get dark, yeah. y'all. Biological, chemical warfare, radiological warfare. And uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, bad. Yeah. Did, <laughs> did a lot of shit to uh, Chinese prisoners and some American prisoners. Not even prisoners, just people they, like, snatched from villages yeah, and stuff. Just, hey. Yeah. Right, yeah. We need an experimental subject. They were subject. Chinese, though, I think. They were, yeah. They were Chinese. Most of them. There were, like, some other ones, too. They might have gotten some Koreans in there. Yeah. I'm not sure. But uh, it's been a long time since I've uh, read about it. But uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty wild. From this program, all those damn secret weapons you saw that they were trying to destroy Godzilla with came from this program. Probably. That is not a lie. Yeah. Remember the ray gun they kept fucking shooting Godzilla with? <laughs> yeah. They were trying to figure that out in this. <laughs> the microwave weapon. And yet, when, yeah. when we talk about some of the horrible, horrible experiments, and this is something that came out later, it's just like a lot of the, um, a lot of the information that they mm. came up with was like not super useful. No. Um, so I feel like a lot of the experiments they were doing were just because they were fucked up sociopaths. Well, yeah. And they were just, you know, it was like some Joseph Mengele shit, but like right. not... <sighs> Maybe even didn't worse than yield, that. I don't know. It, it didn't evidently yield a whole lot. A no, whole lot of stuff. that's what I'm saying. So I yeah. think, and I think a lot of the experiments that they did, like, the, I can't even think of what they would use as a cover story to say, like, why we're doing this experiment. So it's like, we just wanted to just do science, it. Science, man. Science. Because we're psychos. Yeah, science. Pretty much. That's, that's kind of it. Yeah. So if, if the reports are accurate, I mean, you know, a lot of the shit got destroyed, but uh, they're pretty yeah. sure. They know that they were working with cyclomagnetrons and just bombarding dudes with microwaves. Um, some of that experiment exists. But if you ever see uh, Godzilla, Gojira, whenever they so show the fucking vehicles pulling up the, tr the, the, uh, the trucks with the trailers behind it, and then they got the tube with the damn radar dish on it that they point at Godzilla, the beam comes out and kills him. That's what they were trying to make. That, Actually, we're trying to make that. Spoiler alert: They did not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the <sighs> Japanese. The Japanese were. Uh, the, the Americans were focusing on the atomic bombs. The the Japanese were focusing on a death ray. Yeah. Death ray. Yeah. Which you they know, were gonna line the whole island. Who wouldn't want a death ray if yeah. you can invent one? They were gonna line the coastline of all the damn the whole island with death rays and zap those incoming fucking Americans as they were coming in. Pew pew yeah. pew. Yeah. Which sounds good, but uh, they, didn't, <laughs> they didn't know what they were talking well, about. Well, a lot of things sound good, but, yeah. you know. They didn't understand the energy demands for something like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you can think up a lot of shit. Right. Can you actually do it in a practical fashion? Yeah. Eh, not need always. nuclear power to power that many death rays. You might as well just drop atomic bombs on them. Much easier. Much easier, yeah. That's the thing. It's just kind of like, I'm going to try like hell, because I've been reading about this and watching documentaries and shit. I'm going to try like hell. I don't know. This is this is one of those topics that it's like I feel bad like when we go off on sidetracks and we're like funny and stuff because this shit is just like yeah. ugh, it's just it's like so terrible and it's like so soul crushing. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm kind of like slightly mollified by the fact that both Time Suck and Last Podcast on the Left managed to do shows about this that were horrific and also mm -hmm entertaining and funny yeah. at the same time without being without it like making fun of it you know what i'm saying yeah. so it is like possible to do but this is like pretty fucking grim i'm just telling you right yeah now. it's weird that this happened and then this you know once the allies took over japan as an occupation force uh they just brushed all this under the rug yeah it seemed like a lot of people didn't even really know no. about it until what no. like the 1950s and yeah. even then like i feel like a lot of people it wasn't yeah. like widespread knowledge yeah the, a lot of the shit that they did I mean, it wasn't as it wasn't the vast amount of people as it was the holocaust but it, i think a lot of it was looking a lot worse than the holocaust to a certain extent 
Um, and they never re- the Japanese never really got punished for it. Not um, really. No. Um, the U.S. at least didn't. We'll get into that. The Soviets did. They had a trial, but um, yeah. e- even then, it's, they got off pretty late. Yeah, people forget about the Japanese. I think the idea, I think the reason why they never really had any war crimes uh, tribunals around this is because the Japanese, when they surrendered, they were real obedient. They just obeyed whatever the emperor said. And the emperors told them to retreat and to be good and not to resist and just go back to work and they did that and i think the last thing the 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 american forces wanted was to start hunting down war criminals inside there because that would have uh disrupted the harmony that was inside japan i think that had a lot to do with it politics well they just kind of did whatever they were told to do they weren't some would say they weren't real responsible for what they did they were you know hey you cut that woman's head off yes sir they would just do it because that was just the culture well, that they had. Another thing too was that the U.S. Uh, low key wanted the research just yeah. to see. Well, not so much. That, they, was, but that was the Germans too. Yeah. Well, yeah. they wanted it because they were kind of like, well, we we kind of want it because we can't do human experimentation, but we also want it because we don't want the Soviets getting hold of it just in yeah. case there's like some cool shit in there. Yeah. Um. So you know, so there was that. So they're like, well, we'll give them leniency. If yeah. they if they cough up the information. all that Nuremberg war trial stuff, yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but there was a lot of hypocrisy in it too, because uh, we were doing not that type of war crimes, but other types of war crimes like bombing whole fucking cities, burning up children and shit, because that was just the state of the art technology at the time. Had we lost, we would have fucking been in war crimes tribunals also. Well, sure. There was a lot of hypocrisy in the aftermath of war. You bastards, you were bad, so you're going to go to jail. Yeah, well, everybody does fuck yeah, up Yeah, everybody shit. was doing bad Although, shit. to be honest, <laughs> stuff, like this, stuff like the Holocaust, stuff yeah. like Unit 731, this stuff is way beyond the fucking pale. Yeah. Way beyond the yeah. pale. Although, I must say, beyond the pale, beyond the pale were the Russians. And they, and they were our allies. And uh, they basically just raped and burned their way th- all through Europe and in, into Berlin. There were even Russian military female witnesses they just said that it was just an army of gang rapists they were just murdering german women and stuff they were fucking brutal um they just and they, every every female from like eight to eighty they just fucking raped them and they'd find big piles of dead women and shit in parts of berlin <clears throat> the germans were surrendering to the americans and the americans would go no you guys you got ammo left go kill some russians before you surrender then come back look what they're doing to your women they were showing them photographs because we were going to turn on the russians Anyway, Russians and the Americans are going to turn on each other at any minute. They were bad, too. As soon as war was over, Cold War began. Yeah. But uh, when it came to just ultimate fucking brutality, the Russians were fucking terrible. And they were our allies. So, gets back to the damn So, like I said, hypocrisy. basically, everyone sucks yeah. the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were the less... Su- Although, they- I, I will say, I have never done any war crimes, yeah. so... I would say the United States and you know America was the least of all the suck had the least suckitude. Um, maybe even the Italians they 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 weren't real known for fucking a lot of barbarism. But uh, no, America did a lot of fucked up shit too. We we machine gunned prisoners and stuff, German prisoners, killed dudes and did stuff. But we it was all just depending on where you were at the war at any given time. You know what I mean? You could it was chaos. Like, you know, that's the had, thing. I, I mean, I feel like in that in that kind of I'm not excusing it, obviously, no. but it's just kind of like during that thing, like you would get away with shit that obviously yeah. you wouldn't get away with. Yeah. A bunch of Germans would surrender and fucking, you know, and they'd be all cool with them. You know, this is right after the D-Day invasions, the landing and uh, just out of the, they'd be out there smoking cigarettes with the Germans and shit. And one dude would just walk up to a fucking German to fucking machine gun him. And then the American guy would and they'd pile on him. Why'd you do that? Those motherfuckers killed my brother, you know. That's just, a, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. That's the thing. It's just... Yeah. It's fucked up. And that, that did happen. That was an actual thing. That was in the, that was in the 506th. Uh, somewhere else in the theater, the dude just got a letter the day before that, the, that he had died in some kind of an attack fighting the Russians. But, you know, he got the letter from home that his brother had been killed by the... And uh, he just wanted to kill a German. Yeah. You, know, you do that shit today, you get in serious trouble. But back in those days, they just said, well, it's under the stress of war. And there yeah, they certain... let a lot of shit slide back yeah. then. And then there was times I, where... I think it's not good to let shit like that slide. <laughs> well, there's no laws. 
There's not. Yeah. This is not happening inside of civilization. The countries are just totally buckled and crushed. Now yeah. they did. If some shit was just beyond the pale, you know what I mean? Like some kind of fucking sexual crime against a civilian who's not even you're not even in an, on an enemy side. The Americans would punish you for that. Um, you know. Uh, but no, sometimes that random shit they let it slide. It was it's better to put that dude back into service because everybody was dying. Millions of people were dying. You know. Wasn't a lot of sanity. I think mental health wasn't what it was today back then. Imagine if you saw true. just basically if it would probably if that that period and 731 comes from that period from the point of view of the people that were living at that time. This was the apocalypse. They could not imagine a world after it. Not yeah. as not as you know it. So, and to be that, honest, I'm surprised anybody that came out of that that saw any of this stuff firsthand like yeah. was able to get past that and like be normal again. Whole cities were just reduced to rub, rubble. I mean, I can't imagine like living through some yeah. of it or seeing some of this shit like that we're going to talk about today. Or, like just seeing that firsthand, that would like, yeah. One of the worst things America did, you know, and, I'm, and for you, so you guys don't know who I am, I'm a veteran of the U.S. Army, first in the 506 Infantry, which is an airborne unit, first 327 recon, fucking with Tiger Force, a little fucking recon platoon. You know, I served the Empire and back when the Empire was strong, okay? Um, but yeah, bad shit happened. And uh, even during World War II, it was another time. Example, like I think probably the worst thing America ever did was we bombed, I think it was 63 Japanese cities, most of it with fire bombs. It was much worse than the Hiroshima attack. Just what they did to Tokyo, they just burnt it, burnt it to the fucking ground. And uh, witnesses survived it who were on those bomber crews. They just said their heads would be spinning. You said you could smell the burning flesh after they were going through those different bombing runs of all those people down there burning. And uh, those waste gunners would look out the sides of the waste and look down in the fucking burning city. And they could just think that they could hear nothing but screams. But they were way up high. There's no way there could have been screams. But they f they thought they could hear well, masses yeah, of I, people screaming. Well, yeah, I can understand that. You could smell burning hair and burning yeah. flesh and stuff in, in those fucking bo unpressurized bombers up there. So it was horrible. So it was like looking over the sea, a sea of flames, like looking into hell. Because yeah. Tokyo burned. Fucking like I said, nothing. I can't fucking imagine. Yeah. It, well, because like I said, you know, for the past couple of days that I've been like watching documentaries about this and like reading about it and stuff like that, it's just kind of like I'm trying to put myself into the mindset of somebody that was just going about their daily life, being a farmer or whatever, and then they just get picked up by this fucking unit and taken to a place. Just, yeah. like, the shit they did there was just, like, fucking unspeakable. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just kind of, like, I can't imagine that being, like, the last day or two of your life, like, going through that kind yeah. of shit. It must have been fucking horrifying. The value of human life during World War II in the theaters of the operation was fucking very low. Very, 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 very cheap. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. A lot of people. Now, that's a setup for the show. Thank you. We got a got a super chat. Twenty dollars. Would that say? TV oh, stop. Prop says uh, mentioned the men behind the sun. Yeah, I think that is uh, about this. Actually, is it a fictional movie or a documentary? I can't remember. Thank you, TB Driggers. Thank you very much. Just because I love you guys. Oh, thank you very much. We love you too. Okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and fucking get ready. How many people are in here? Let's give them a little bit of news. We went and saw the new house today. It looks fucking great. We got the keys. Got the keys. I got. Uh, I got power turned on over there well it was on well, we just had on. to transfer transferred it and uh gonna get the internet set up and uh, we're probably gonna start moving down there monday and yeah. uh we may for that week for next week we might take a break well we'll see how, we'll it, goes. see how it goes i mean like so i you said may not we'll... hear from us in terms of live streaming or whatever we have to see how much time that, it, that we have we're, I'm going to see how much shit I can get done tomorrow, like yeah. as far as packing. Because like I said, my stuff, I don't have a lot of I'm not taking most of this furniture um, that's in here, at least. Most of it's sorting through garage and storage. Yeah. And so, moving bigger stuff like bed, furniture, shit like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So, but like I said. Gotta move if, a refrigerator, refrigerator. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And a bunch of gener two generators and a bunch of window unit air conditioners for emergency. You never throw an air conditioner away in Florida. Never. Well, hell no. No. And <laughs> you, great to have generators, too. 
Well, yeah. The, I mean, and that one generator is now. Yeah. So. And then I got to get the motorcycles down there. I'll ride two of them. Then, then the little CT70 will carry that in a car or something. Yeah, because that's small enough that's to little, go on my back yeah. seat, probably. Yeah. But yeah. We're, you know, le- like I said, priority is I want to get, you know, internet's getting set up on Monday. Um, so we're like going to, I mean, so setting up my office is like top priority Yeah. because that's kind of like, so I'm going to try, but like I said, I'm going to, if, if there's like interruptions in some of the live streams, like maybe we have to skip a matinee live stream or something like that. Um, I'll try and keep on doing the, the main show and, pr- and maybe the sidetrack show, but some of the matinees might, I'm going to try not to, but we'll see how it goes. Cause like I we said, we can always drop an update inside the, inside the stream. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm going. saying. So, cause I want to get over there and at least get the office yeah. painted and the, I got to get the internet connected. Yeah. And get that shit going. Cause we can't, they, um, they don't have, we have AT&T here, right? Yeah, they don't um, have AT&T. They don't have it. AT&T over there. Um, yeah. cause it's a little bit out so of the way. So I gotta get wireless. We have to get CenturyLink. And I gotta see if a LAN cable can be run up to the office. Let me see or how Or wherever. Thank start. you, Green Spark. Hi and happy Friday. Long time lurker. <laughs> Congrats Thank on you. the move. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I was so excited to see that whole top floor. I'm like, oh my God, it's yeah. a, it's huge. Yeah. There's so much room. And it's just kind of like, yeah. there's so many rooms that we don't even know what we're going to do with all yeah, of them. The bottom them. floor isn't that big. It's weird because it's a lot of it's garage. Garage and... Well, tile, the bottom floor is kind of big too. But like, I mean, the top floor, the top floor essentially has four bedrooms and one big, yeah. huge long room that's like a living room, lounge yeah, situation. Yeah, it's like a second living room. So it's like, man, we have so much stuff. Like I said, I don't even know what we're going to do. going to have an indoor gym in this one. Yeah. I'm gonna put the uh, put my bench in there, weight bench in there. I'm probably gonna get Jenny a um, uh, exercise bike. Exercise bike. And I've been wanting to get one for a while. I just haven't got around to it. I think there might be a room to get a squat machine in there. Yeah, we'll. I mean, we'll see. Like I said, yeah. as long as it's you know, it's not a massive room, but it's big enough for bigger like, than this room. It's bigger than this room, yeah. so we'll put a few things in there. Yeah. That'll be nice, um, and it'll be under. It'll be air conditioned. Yeah, Jenny wants to paint one of the rooms, though. Well, I want to paint we'll the office right. and the attached bathroom because the room that I'm going to use as an office has a bathroom like attached to it with a little makeup center and a little closet and all. So it'll be nice. It'll you know what nice. I might do? You know these floor lights that we're using for lighting? Maybe I'll mount them onto the ceiling over there and run the wiring up on the ceiling. That way, we're not stepping over lights and cords. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, they have a little thing that you can mount them, right? Yeah. I mean, they can be mounted to the ceiling. Yeah, I thought they could. And then uh, just use like push pins to mount the cords. We'll make sure they're out of out of shot. I, October yeah. 8th says, is it haunted? How many people have no. died in there? I don't think anyone's house died is in very there. Old. It's not that old. <laughs> the house is maybe 12 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like the same age as this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it's haunted. It's a house know. like this one. It's just two stories. Yeah, it's just bigger than this one. That's all. But it's yeah. like similar. I think it was built around the same I'm time. I'm kind of happy to get out of here, man. They're expanding this road. They're building around here. This is straight up fucking suburbia now. This used to be at the edge of town in Orlando. This used to be like the edge of Orlando. Now it's Orlando almost. It feels like Orlando. It's becoming suburban sprawl. Well, yeah, get out there. It's, this is 10 miles away. It's still kind of like it's it's grown up. I used to live out there, too, but it's it's changed. I mean, you got sushi restaurants and shit now. <laughs> it's a sign. You millennials with your yeah, avocado sushi. toast restaurants, yeah. avocado toast and sushi restaurants. They had a biker bar there still mm, go to that damn biker bar. <laughs> you can go to that biker yeah. bar. I'm not yeah. going to that biker bar. <laughs> yeah. I've had my fill of biker bars. Oh, yeah, biker bar. From growing up in Daytona Ride my Beach. bike down there. Yeah. Yeah, go hang out with, with, with your Yeah, you go down there in the afternoon. That's when the, that's when the real bikers are That's when the real drunks are there. That's when the real bikers are there in the afternoon. <laughs> the real hardcore yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got some <laughs> skinny ass bitch with fucking tube top swinging on that damn pole. With she too, <laughs> no, no teeth on her. And like half her teeth gone. <laughs> so she, how you doing, baby? I'll see you. I'll see you, cutie pie. Yeah, give me some money. <laughs> Tuck it right in here. Yeah, get that right in there. Says, Near the stretch marks? Yeah, yeah, put it in there. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that's like nice. <laughs> What's wrong with sushi, Tom? Tom actually loves sushi. No, sushi is a sign of... Gen- I love it, but it's a sign of gentrification. 
Well, yeah, I, all I'm saying is, like, th- this yeah. used to be the type of place where it's, like, you'd have a gas station yeah. and, like, a, a crab shack or a diner, and that's mm-hmm. about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? A diner. But now they have a sushi place. And like a 7-Eleven. Right, right up the street, there's a sushi place. There's a Publix. grocery store. There's an ice cream parlor. Yeah. There's a bar and grill. There's all kind of stuff. Yeah. Like a eight, nice one. And there's an AMC theater and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's a normal place now, but it used to be just horse farms. Yeah, so there was, like, nothing around Yeah, high, for, horse farms, and there are a lot of high-end houses, but they're all kind of, like, hidden. Rich people living up in there. They're not even so from like, here. Shh, like, shh, nobody wants yeah, to. Yeah, they don't even, they're not even from here. They're from other states and shit. California and New York and stuff. <laughs> Oscar says, very happy to hear of the good fortune bestowed upon you two with the major house upgrade. Yeah. I know. I was very excited, because this was actually the first time we had seen it inside in person. Like, we'd seen pictures of it. Yeah, the only, thing but, I, the only thing we don't know is the damn energy costs. Well, we'll see. Keeping that bitch air-conditioned. Yeah, we've never lived in a two-story, so I'm yeah. not really sure. I mean, I have a long time ago, but I wasn't You see, you got to live in a place like three or four years before they can get your average power consumption, and then they can average it out to a monthly bill. And you see, when it's averaged out to a monthly expense, it's a lot easier. But here in Florida, when they hit you just monthly, you're okay until summer comes. Then all of a sudden, it's a thousand dollar a month energy bill. Right. It's kind of like in the winter, it's kind of like nothing. And so then, yeah, it's like nothing and a thousand bucks. And then it's like three times right. more. Right. When you can a- when you can <laughs> average it out, then it's only you know maybe three hundred, two hundred depends, two fifty. So yeah, we just got to see. It'll be good. I'm ex- there, like I said, was, I'm excited. Yeah. After it I was saw eighty the degrees out. in there when we went in there, and it didn't feel that hot. 80 degrees would fucking kill you in this house. I don't know why. It just, when it, that thermostat says 80, it feels like it's 90 in here. It does, yeah. But 80 in there felt quite good. I don't know. Yeah, what, I didn't really notice it being yeah. like warm or anything. Yeah, yeah, I think they had the thermostat on 79. When 79 we is there. what they had it on. Yeah, and it wasn't, I didn't notice it being like all of that warm. It felt like it feels in here right now and it's, it's uh, 72. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So like I said, maybe it's more en- energy efficient. Energy efficient. Some, maybe, something about maybe about the uh, the flow of the air because it has that big central open thing between That's the true. floors. Maybe airflow might be better. I think I was actually like um, pleasantly surprised. I thought it was like I thought it was beautiful inside. Yeah. I just re- it was really nice and it looked it was, like it was in really good shape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it looked like it had really been taken care it's of. It's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, I said, especially the upstairs. Yeah. I think is like super. Being cool. out there and and being out there in the on the edge of the city, fucking on the edge of uh, edge of town, it's bear country. It is. You know, bears and animals and shit. And uh, being out there, I could get back to riding motorcycles. Riding a motorcycle isn't very fun around here. There's too much traffic right now. Didn't used to be like that, but then. Well, yeah, like later. I said, it used to be kind of rural out yeah. here, but not anymore. not anymore. Like I said, just the shit they blocked off the road. We left to go up to the house today, and then like we got part of the way, and they blocked the road off because they were like widening it or regrading it or something. Uh, uh, David, I got your uh, shirt done, man. It's right over here. Yeah, because didn't you say you wanted a shirt for your friend? I think I sent you a message that said, "Do you want me to just send it to your regular address?" Because I'm pretty yeah. sure I have that. Um, but if you don't, let me yeah, know, I'll show it to you. and I'll mail it. I mean, maybe we can mail it tomorrow or Sunday. I'm trying to think like when. Yeah, see, there you go. It's got it in fat boy size. <laughs> and then I put 13 you're o'clock so, on a bed. You're so nice, Tom. Yeah. What it is what it is. 3XL. <laughs> Shit, that's fat boy size. It's 4. 4XL. Yeah. I think. That was the last one I, that I had. 4XL, 3XL. Look at that. I think it was 3XL. No, it's 4. Is it? Can okay. you read? No. No, I don't, can't read. I have my glasses <laughs> on. That bigger image looks a lot better on these bigger shirts. Yeah, I'm glad we did a bigger one. Yeah. I still got to do this other, like the Canon and stuff like that. Holy crap. Yeah, Canon and OCP are on the way. He says, yeah, my normal address will work. Okay, awesome. All right. So that's all I need to know. So if we have time, we will try to mail it this weekend. i got to run up to the <clears throat> post office. Didn't you say that there was a post office much closer to the new house? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Because yeah. we, Which is dumb because now we're like almost in the middle of like suburbia now, but the post office is like fucking five miles up the road. you got to fight traffic to get to it. And too. it's like, yeah, it's a pain in the ass to get to. But it's like, so, yeah, that's that's actually uh, quite cool. Yeah, good question. David goes, speaking of tube tops, where's Sandra? Where is fucking Sandra? Yeah, maybe she's got something yeah. else to do. It's Friday night. Stop Prop says, just do what you have to do. Post an update as things progress. That's what we'll do. Like I said, I'll try not to. Like, I'll try to keep up the regular schedule. But if we have to skip a couple, like, movie review live streams, yeah. then maybe we will, like, depending. Because we might not have time to, like, watch a movie or... 
You know what I mean? Because okay. actually, we were going to go to a movie yesterday, and we didn't have time. I got a uh, firearms-related question. This is from Prepper POV. Tom, do you see an issue with keeping a silencer on a gun 24-7 for a home defense rig? The only problem I have with silencers is that silencers do not exist. There are only sound suppressors. That bitch is never silent. Okay. You suppress a 9mm, you use subsonic ammunition, it will sound like an unsuppressed 22 in general. A suppressed 22 long rifle pistol, done right, sounds about like a BB gun. You can hear the bullet impact. Can't suppress any kind of ultrasonic rifle, none of that. You can suppress subsonic 300, uh, uh, what is it, what's it called? Shit, not went 300. Fuck, I forgot the name of the damn cartridge. What's that new cartridge where you can uh, convert an AR upper to 30 caliber? You'll know what I'm talking about. I think it's called 300. 300 Whisper or something like that. Anyway, um, running the subsonic ones, those are sound about like a... Mm, sound about, about like a 38 Special, kind of. Um, as long as you got it registered and you can legally possess that suppressor, you can keep you can put that suppressor on a pistol and use it for home defense. The main the biggest if you've ever fucked with suppression, for me, the big the best advantage to suppression with pistols is that it makes a pistol fucking real easy to fire. It's very mild, pussycat type shit. If you've got it tuned right. If it's the right ammunition, it's the right operating springs and everything, it's all good. Um, they're just real sweet to shoot, real easy to shoot. And of course you don't need, you don't need a bunch of hearing protection. I mean, they're still loud, but they don't really ring your bell in an enclosed area as much. Uh, and, um, they're just kind of sweet. So if you're in a jurisdiction that allows them and you can legally possess it, then yeah, you can use it for a home defense rig, but... Why would you use a pistol for home defense? I mean, pistols are really for concealment. What would be better is like a 9mm converted AR-15 with that CMMG rotating bolt. What is that? that with the, it's kind of like delayed rotating bolt system from CMMG. But a suppressor on that. Because, you know, anything with a buttstock is easier to deal with. And if that's suppressed with 147, uh, with 147 subsonic ammunition... It'd be a real pussy cat. It'd be like a twenty-two. A little more recoil, but not as much as uh, the blowback versions, if you know what I'm talking about. That CMMG delayed blowback with the rotating lugs, it's real mild. About like an MP5. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, okay, so I had a couple other shout-outs as well. I don't think Esther is here, unfortunately, but I'll yeah. give her another shout-out next time we live stream. But she sent me some lovely early birthday presents one of which is this gorgeous necklace right here look at how beautiful she also sent me these awesome earrings these were actually from my amazon wish list because i've been wanting these for a really yeah. long time because i love the green look at how pretty i love this like this green kind of stuff so thank yeah. you so much esther that is so so awesome also i love the little gift bag also the last two games remember i said that I had two more games that I designed a long time ago, but I hadn't like ordered them yet. So I finally got the proof copies. So this is my absinthe themed one called the green hour. And that's kind of like, it's kind of like a thing where you, it's like a, you go around and you have to like collect all the drink tokens from all these different uh, bars from Paris at around the time of, you know, Absinthe was like super popular. Those were all like real clubs and stuff. This one, I still have to like go through and like do all the web graphics and stuff for this, which won't take that long. I'll probably, I'll try to do that this weekend and put it up for sale. So this one's not for sale yet, but it will be before the end of the weekend. This, is this awesome one too. is my ancient Egypt one right there. So that's that one. And this is the back that's what the board looks like it's got like little mummies and little cards it's like super cool and fun and uh yeah this one actually is up for sale but the absinthe one will be up for sale before the end of the week and i think that's all the ones that i had up there i was so excited to finally get all of those because like i said you have to order a proof copy before you're allowed to put them up for sale so you can like look at how they printed 
Um, so I finally, those were the last two that I had to put up. Yeah, uh, Prepper, 300, 300 Blackout, you're right. I was thinking 300 Whisper, that was the first one that came out. But the, those are good cartridges too, but mostly for suppression or close range type stuff. Kind of like an AK round. But uh, 300 Blackout, I think they had a 240 grain load that was real heavy, real slow, and it was quiet out of a suppressor. But, um, yeah. Pistol's always last ditch, man. You go to pistol last. If it's for home defense, man, get a carbine. Go ahead. David June says, how are you so talented, Jenny? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, damn, can I have just a quarter of it? Yeah. It's a, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if it's so much that. It's just like there's a million things that I want to do. And it's like, there's just so much. And like I said, nowadays that there's like opportunity when I first found the site, like the game crafter. And I was like, you mean I can design my own board games? Holy shit. I'm totally doing that. But in a lot of ways it's bad because every time I think of like a new format, it's like, Oh look, I can design t-shirts. I can design board games. I can do this, that, and the other. And it's like, so I want to do a million things and I know I'm not going to have time to do it all. So I don't have much focus, but you know, <laughs> that's one, that's one of the things I have a million things I want to do, but I don't like, I don't have the the discipline to just focus on one thing that long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just get bored of doing one thing. All right, so are Bees we? Nest cat escaped off the second floor. No, you can't find it. Oh yeah. no, no! I'm telling you, man, that cat didn't go far. I hope not. No, it'll be back. Oh, please, yeah. tell me that it comes back. If um, it jumped, it's on. It, it's that cat's fault. Jumped off the second floor balcony. Well, that's not making any better. Does that? I just hope that there was grass, a grassy place where it could land. But um, no, a cat can fall from quite far without breaking a limb. I know you're worried about that. No, a cat's all right. It'll be back. I hope so. I mean, they usually do. If it come runs back, from right? people, then people won't be able to grab it. I'd walk around, call call him in the middle of the night and see if you could hear her meowing when it's yeah. quiet. I'm always like I'm always yeah. like so worried about that. Hiding in the bushes somewhere, or hiding underneath the car. I mean, that's what our cats do. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't worry as much about them. Although I will worry about them for a long time when we move to the new place because it's going to be unfamiliar to them, and they're going to be like they're either going to be scared or they're going to be like, man, I'm going to check all this shit out, and they'll be wandering all over the place, and I don't really like the sound of that. They got a good sense of direction. They don't get lost very easily. And honestly, I kind of feel like lately it just seems like they mostly just want to sit on the porch yeah. or sit in the bushes. They like to sit in the bushes and like watch people going by. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Melanie Murphy asked, where can I get the game? Uh, they, at the Game Crafter, I think uh, the link is usually in the description box. I think I usually put it in there. But like I said, the Absinthe one is not for sale yet because I haven't done the web graphics, but that won't take that long. I'm hoping to do it like this weekend and have it up by Monday. But all the other ones are up. I have like a whole shit ton of them, you know. Um, Mr. Roboto said, Tom, are you hard rock today or classic rock? I don't like any of that shit. <laughs> Metal. <laughs> Metal and new wave and some old punk and goth music and goth industrial and good shit like that. Good shit like that. Yeah, classic <laughs> stuff. That's what, classic rock is what I listened to when I when I was in high school, fucking as a dishwasher, fucking washing dishes, and the cooks have the damn fucking classic rock. I listen to listen to fucking Bob Seger and shit. <laughs> Some of the shit was good though. Fucking you know, uh, uh, oh what's his name? You know, fucking Southern man. What was what's that dude's name? Fucking Neil Young. Neil Young. Yeah, Neil, I liked Neil Young. He's pretty good. It's like the George Burns of rock and roll. Dude around forever. Fucking, um, what else? Ah, it don't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Classic rock. Camp Guy said, do you have to know a lot of Egyptian lore to play the game? No, it's like, it's pretty uh, easy, I think. And pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, so. you can buy that where? The Game Crafter. The Game Crafter. Like I said, I usually put the, um, the link is usually in the description. Link in the description. I mean, my site, my, I'm plugging. my, Blank in the my store is called Giallo Games because when I originally yeah. started designing games, they were all Giallo based. Yeah. But then I started being like, ooh, I could do a game like this and ooh, I could do a game like that. So. How do you spell Giallo? G I A L L O. Okay. It means yellow in Italian. Yeah. People aren't sophisticated, though. I don't even know how to spell that. You know, I would, could never find Tom it. Tom thinks everyone's a dummy. Yeah. 
No. I, I, <laughs> I'm a trained salesman. I know that the dumber that shit is, the more it will sell. The dumber it is, the more it will sell. So, I'm not worried about it. I'm more. I'm more. I would have made the name. I'm more worried about doing something that I like yeah. and enjoy doing than giving a shit about what dumb people think of it. <laughs> yeah. Duh. I would have named the site fucking Big Titty Games. Never forget it. Every dumbass can find it. Big Titty Games. Sell a bunch of fuck. It sells shit to dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of beer, crushed beer cans and shit. <laughs> it's my it's my crushed cr- beer can. My crushed beer can business. Yeah, crushed beer cans and shit. But what fun would that? That would be just like having a regular job yeah. that I that I hate. Yeah. Why would I want to do that? Yeah. Well, you have a high end line, and then you have your bread and butter line. See. <laughs> okay. And the bread and butter line is fucking like down to the lowest common denominator. You why? Know? Why don't you? Why don't you start a big? I can help you games? to do it. I can help you how to do it. I, I don't have time to do that. I don't you, have time. You to figure it either. out. Yeah, you do. No, you could figure it out. She's always trying to get me to do something. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's always trying to get me to do something. I'm like, dude, do I already so. have like three jobs. What the yeah. hell else? <laughs> You're all in here, though. <laughs> I well, know. I need to get a laptop. I need to get a laptop. I need to start. People are saying, Tom, you need... You can use this one, actually. I don't use that one that much I anymore. want a live stream, though. Some people are saying, Tom, you need to have your own channel. You can live, live stream. stream. You can live stream on that. Yeah? Yeah. I think it'll... Uh, won't fuck up like last time we tried to live stream on that? Well, I don't know. But, to live stream well, well like I said, we're cr- crashing. we're moving, so we'll, yeah, see, we'll see how we'll it see. goes. But like I said, I have that one there. If you, I don't use that one. Yeah. So if you want to get that one, so Tom, you need to get up here, do some stand up, and just fucking fuck fuck around, and then give your opinions on shit, on comment on on on, uh, on uh, fucking current events, and, and fucking put forth my fucking hypothesis, my predictions about how everything's gonna go. I just read the news. I can read the news. And I, here's the thing. Some of you guys listen to Salty Cracker. I like Salty Cracker. I could beat Salty Cracker when I'm really worked up. I could fuck it. I would first of all, I could do that gig. Mine would be different. It'd be a lot different. Although I fucking I like his work. My, I would be even more audacious. I'd get, I'd be kicked off of YouTube quick. I'd have to put that shit up on fucking BitChute or something. What's the other one? Fucking Odyssey. I'd have to stream that shit off of Odyssey. Well, like I said, if you they kick me off of YouTube, you are welcome to that yeah. uh, laptop if you would like to use it. Yeah. But you're gonna have to like buy your own camera and shit like that, though. Yeah, I could do that. That's no big deal. I'd be up there. It would be mostly motivational. Although, actually, you could probably use that one, and I could hook that one up because yeah. I do actually. That's what have, I would do. I actually do. I have would another, use that one. I actually do. Have you got that camera. one and never used it. I have another camera and I have another microphone. I, although I don't know if that other Yeti works or not. It's kind of yeah. like intermittent, you know. We have all kind of like old No, Tina equipment. did not walk out of our lives forever. She jumped in fucking last Wednesday and fucking Yeah, she hi. was here for a few minutes on Wednesday. She, that, she's busy. She's doing something. Yeah. Like, every, you know, not everybody yeah. has time to like sit around and listen yeah, to us. Can't. Like, yeah, talking. Pepper's saying, tell me to do it. Well, yeah, like I said, if you want to do Jones it. Jones says, big titty games. Oh my God, that's awesome. That's right. I'm telling you, man. Dollywood, a big boob theme park. Yeah, see, yeah. there you go. Yeah. I've never been to Dollywood. No, nah, see. That would be really funny if they had like a um a bunch of what do you call them like uh, yeah. roller coasters that were yeah. all just like going up and down boobs and stuff. See, the thing is, the thing is, is that when you're live streaming with two people, it's a lot easier because me and Jenny can play off of each other. Live streaming alone, I'd ha- you guys would have to be in the comment sections really fucking with me, and I would have to make a bunch of notes to make to keep me on track, kind of like what Jenny does. And I would probably just, although look how effective that is. <laughs> yeah, I probably would just uh, go through the like the news of the day and, and read the news. I'd become like a like a funny newscaster, and then I would make fun of fucking what people said and just shit. I just have to go with with, with the flow, you know. But I, I could do it. It'd probably be funny. Probably be funny. We well, yeah. talk about the apocalypse, and then I give fucking preppers like, yeah, do it. And then I give apocalypse. Apocalypse fucking concepts of fucking how to survive the zombie apocalypse. Even, even though the zombie apocalypse concepts played out. But, you know. Yeah, really, every, know. everyone's kind well, of... Well, a it. zombie is just a hungry person, you know what I mean? They don't have a job. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Help! Which is kind of a Hollywood concept of what civilizational collapse looks like, but that's not how it really looks like. It doesn't, look, it doesn't actually look like that. 
looks it'll, more like Eastern Europe during the fucking it'll breakup. Be all right. It looks not, more like Eastern Europe in the breakup of the Soviet Union. That's what it actually would look like. I'm not worried about zombies. Yeah. I got enough shit I gotta worry yeah. about. I'm definitely not worried about zombies. Yeah. <laughs> Dudes looking for jobs, women trying to fucking pimp themselves out. Fucking going off to Dubai to fucking make money. That's what it would look like. Sorry if you like if you hear banging and stuff like that, it's actually thunder. Yeah. It's storming outside. Yeah. Again, it even says raining now on my at the bottom of my little computer. It just started doing that the other day. I didn't notice. Yeah. That it started telling me the weather <laughs> on the little bottom thing. Um, all right, so now that we've been like yapping for like forty six minutes. That's time to start show. So are we actually gonna start talking about this shit? Yeah. Now? Like I said, you um you I mean, let me, let me scroll down, let me see how many notes we got. He has to see how many notes we got that many that's a long show i mean some of that's not like like i said i just kind of read there we go. that's okay. well i don't need that but okay. um but that's kind of like um yeah zoom up okay it's not that much yeah okay it All just right. looks like a lot yeah it looks like doing that's enough for show yeah because sometimes she'll get enough notes i'm gonna fuck with her Sometimes she'll get enough notes to do five shows, and she's like, "We got to put all this on." Well, this I on. I would have been able to do it if you yeah. hadn't like kept going off on like hour long tangents. See, now she wants to put it back on me. <laughs> we're just gonna have a good show, Jenny. Shit's gonna be funny. All right, it's gonna be good. Well, I I'm mean, a, it's not gonna be funny. We're this talking is about the atrocities. like shit's not funny. But, okay. <laughs> this is like war atrocities. All right. All right. I'm gonna try, but like I said, last podcast on the left did it, and Time Suck did it, and they and the shit was still funny. Okay. But they were it was still funny without like making fun You're of right. the shit. Yeah, one of the things like we're talking this is war crimes, yo. Yeah, one of the things we're talking about is don't get too wrapped up in the sufferings of others. All right, because this happened a long time ago, and everything happened a long time ago. If you wait around long enough, all kinds of bad shit happened in the past. You can't stop it. You can't go back there and fucking. Stop it I or know, alleviate but... anything because it already happened. Everything dies. doesn't matter if you're human or animal or insect. Everything eventually dies, and a lot of shit dies in a bad way. And, and you know what? A lot of times they die for nothing. You know? And it's just... And most things die for nothing. But the thing about it, though, yeah, is that is. the whole the whole uh, concept of empathy yeah. is that you can understand... Yeah, like, yes, I know I can't go back and like make this not to have happened even yeah. though that would be awesome if i could do that yeah but i still put myself in the shoes yeah. of the of those people because that's like i said that's what empathy yeah, is. yeah but you can't you can't feel, you can't do that too much it'll drag you down with it. it's just like the vampire when a vampire is sucking your blood and you they start to die if you focus in on it you go down with the person don't do that <laughs> do that. because uh you have yeah to. but i don't want to be a sociopath either you're looking those, that's all terminology that comes out of psychology, and psychology is more of an art form it's, it's, or a philosophy. It's not a science. Oh, here we go. Don't, don't, fucking, <laughs> don't judge yourself for, for your own survival traits. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of these people that are calling psychopaths and sociopaths, what it is, they're just trying to survive. And uh, they survive at all costs. That was not cost. the case in this. No. In this though, no, the, this was I mean. a very right. regimented. Yeah. And they knew exactly yeah. what they were doing, and they all knew that it was bad and wrong, and yeah. that they would get in trouble if they got caught. Yeah. From the very beginning. Yeah, but so, whoever ordered it thought that it was going to be done for the survival of the Japanese nation and by, by the war effort. They all think that ultimately will help them survive, thrive, or 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 conquer, which is the same thing. You're trying to get. You're trying to get secret weapons technology that will allow you to win. Even Conan knew that fucking winning is really what, what is what, what is best in life. What is best in life, Conan? Winning. You know, just win. If you win, you don't have to worry about anything. It's true. I, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> oh, no. That is exactly the case. America wanted and They didn't have to worry about any of those war, war crimes tribunals. Had they lost, they would have been in war crime. Kurt LeMay would have been a war criminal. Instead, he ended up being the uh, the founder of the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just that's yeah. what that's what's the reality. You kill. I enough was just people, saying general. I'm in say in you general. You kill enough people, sure you eventually true. get away with it. You power through it. You become unstoppable. People fear you, and then you become the new authority. Then no one can try you. And that's the, the world's been like that. That's just how it works. Sorry, I just thought of it's too bad Victor's not here because um, I was thinking of Eddie Izzard talking about <laughs> talking about people who killed a hundred million people or something like that. Yeah. He's like he's like once you get over a certain amount, people are almost just kind of like, yeah, you killed a hundred million people. You must get up very early in yeah. the morning. I can barely get down to the gym. Well, look at 
Look at Mao. <laughs> Mao Zedong was the big, biggest one of them all, and fucking he—he he was never considered a criminal. He was considered the fucking father of modern China. He's a hero to this day over there. That motherfucker made Hitler look like a schoolboy. I mean, he killed a lot more, like a lot more, like six times that. Of his yeah. own people. For, I mean, the point that he was no making reason. was that once it's over a certain amount, like you can't really, like a, a single human brain can't really conceive right. of that anymore. Right. Yeah. You know, because it's not, you know, our, our brains aren't really like, uh, you know, didn't really evolve yeah. to process those yeah. large Even numbers. Yeah, Stalin murdered a lot more than Hitler. He lived a full life and probably murdered his wife and got away with it too. The other one. So, no, you kill enough people, all of a sudden you just become a bad motherfucker. They're scared of you. You die an old man in, 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 in your sleep peacefully like yeah. you're a g oh yeah which will yeah. yeah and the the thing that a lot of that pisses a lot of people off about unit 731 is that um a lot of the people involved in this including the dude that started it um ishi shiro ishi shiro um he pretty much got away with it mm -hmm. um you know just went and lived a normal life yeah. in a little normal street at the end he didn't really have to you know, face the music for any of his crimes. Even though, like I said, he seemed from the beginning, he seemed to know exactly what he was doing. Is David June asking us a question. Where? Did you like me? Yes or no? Oh, that's yeah. He yeah. Well, yeah. Up. No, we don't like you, dude. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Of course we like you. Yeah. <laughs> that's like pretty funny though. So it's like all those little notes you used to pass. He's trying class. to troll and shit. <laughs> all right, so. Some people at the beginning said they didn't know what Unit 731 was. Now, I'm not really entirely sure why Unit 731, I guess because it was the worst one, but um, is, is the one that everybody talks about because there was more than one of these. You know what I mean? There was several. Um, but for whatever reason, this one was is like the best known. And like I said, it seems like it's almost kind of like it almost went down the memory hole for a little while. Um, because really nobody knew much about it until probably the fifties. And then I feel like even after that, it wasn't like super widely known. It wasn't a thing where like, you know, the German atrocities, like the Holocaust and everything like that was pretty much known immediately. But because a lot of the evidence of this, of unit 731 was destroyed, um, purposefully. And because it was kind of hushed up because the Americans gave them immunity so it never really had like a big show trial like the Nuremberg trials or anything like that so I kind of feel like it even though in a lot of ways it was equivalent to like the Holocaust in the you know in the sense of like the brutality the savagery of it I think it was worse it it might have been I mean it, it was... in terms of pure numbers probably not no. but I don't think anybody knows how many people died it was a lot just even just the nastiness of but it. yeah the nastiness of it like I said because I've seen estimates from you know for units of not just unit 731 but just all the other units during this time period I've seen estimates from 200,000 people to like 600,000 people but they're not entirely sure and most of these people were brutally and horribly and unimaginably tortured. Like the yeah. way they were treated was just, yeah. um, yeah. And the reason why I'm saying it's worse than the Holocaust, you have to look at, first of all, the numbers involved in the method and the system that, that the third Reich had on average, if you got sent to a work camp, you died of starvation, but it didn't take long months. They, they overworked you and underfed you. You, you were dead within about six months to a year. But that's not how most of them, most of them uh, weren't killed that way. All right. Most people that died in the Holocaust died in Poland in the death camps, which is as soon as they got off the train, they walked in, they were gassed. So it happened quickly. It wasn't like a, this was what we're talking about. It's kind of long, prolonged kind of. Depending on what you ended up getting. Yeah. Depending on what it was yes. and, and that they did to you. Now they did do Mangala and a lot of these other guys. They did have some, uh, some medical experimentation camps. That yeah, like I said, this is like for. Mengele shit. Yeah, they did. Ha the Germans did have some of that, but they weren't. They weren't. What the Germans were doing is that they they weren't trying to develop biological weapons. This has made a big difference. Okay, really, what the Germans wanted to know is how long did it would it take for freezing water to kill you. That so they they did some of that at units. Yes, and there was a reason for that. They wanted to know how long they had 
to search for somebody, a, a downed pilot, out in the English Channel. Because they didn't want to waste fuel on a dude who would have died. Oh, now he's been out there 10 hours. He's dead. That's all they wanted to know. The other one was uh, pressure and acceleration because they were dealing, dealing with rocket stuff. They wanted to know about rockets and jets. They did that at Unit 731? Yeah, well, they were working on jets and rockets, too. A lot of people yeah. don't know that. The, the Japanese had some badass rockets and jets they were working on. So they wanted to know about pressurization with fucking air cabins and aircraft. They wanted to know what the effects of acceleration and deceleration were. You didn't want to be one of those lab rats because that meant they were going to fucking kill you in a pressure in a, in a, in a, in a decompression chamber or a compression chamber. Bad shit. Not a good way. Yeah. To um, go. I'll put you on a rocket sled and stop you. Boom. Fucking watch your eyes pop out the front of your head. Fuck up your eyes. Uh, did a lot of bad shit. Um, another one that the Germans did is uh, they um, what was it they had the, the most of, the Germans are mostly just about endurance tests they wanted to know what the human body could and could not endure um, they did or they were working on some st shit with um, forced twin births yeah they wanted because basically what they wanted is they wanted um, they wanted a fertility drugs because they wanted each German birth to have like twins at least, and that, that way they could re reproduce their numbers right. a lot faster. The Japanese weren't into that. The Japanese come were on, mostly, ladies, yeah. you have to have twins. Yeah, most of the Japanese effort when it came to uh, this unit that we're talking about, what's it seven thirty one? Seven thirty one. Yeah, seven thirty one was about bio warfare. So they were going to be testing and diseases. Diseases. On, yeah, bio warfare. And but yeah, like yeah. I said, some of the shit they were doing didn't really have anything to do with that and seemed yeah. like they were just doing it to be fucked up and yeah. twisted. Yeah, and bio-warfare fucking, the testing for that, long and torturous, nasty, stinky, terrible shit, um, sadistic. Then, um, then they were trying to d develop energy weapons. So they did fucked up shit. Tie a dude down, bombard him with fucking certain kinds of radiation, see what it did to him. Ugh. In other words, just microwave a motherfucker, put a, I think a cyclomagnetron on that bitch and just fucking zap him. See how long it took to cook him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm not... <laughs> I don't, was, like, want, I, I don't care if it's wartime or not. I don't yeah. want to be around a person that could do which, that to another person. Which is kind of like... I don't hate anybody that much, yeah. and I hate a lot of people. I don't yeah. hate anybody that much. Which is kind of strange, because you know that energy will kill a person. You know, Why do you have to know... Why do you have to test it on a human? Why don't you just put a chicken in there? If it kills that chicken or a goat, then you know it will kill a human. See, that's so why that's, I that's, think that's, that, that a lot the, of this was and then maybe... And you can eat the goat and you can eat the chicken afterwards, but you can't... I wouldn't, but I'm just saying. <laughs> well, that, well, that's what I'm saying. I just kind of feel like... That's why I think that a lot of this was just being sadistic for the sake of it. Because some of the shit, you wouldn't really have to... I mean... Some of the shit that they did was like, duh, super obvious. Or you could have done it to an animal, which is also yeah. not cool. But you know what I mean. Um, better than doing it to a human. The, but, Ger the Germans, it was a little, it was kind of more understandable if you put yourself in their shoes. They had excess people that they were trying to get rid of. They were going to kill those people anyway. So you might as well use them. So that's what gave them their moral permission to do this. Well, we're going to kill this person anyway. So put them in there. Yeah, the Japanese, well. the Japanese didn't really kind of look at it that way. They had food; they didn't have to reduce their population. It's just they just said, "Look, he's Chinese. Put him in there." That was <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> but I guess here, you just could... pick up this random villager yeah. that's just like walking down the road. Although maybe I could be wrong about it because part, if I remember correctly, part of what the what the Japanese were saying is that is that part of their war against China was a war of annihilation. They were just going to annihilate as many Chinese as they could to make a homeland for themselves. So I guess that's probably the same thing the Germans were in. we got to vacate this area. These are excess people. We're going to kill them anyway. Put him in there and use him. And these are hardcore fucking people, you know what I mean? That's the thinking. We should Maybe we should do a show about the rape of Nanking as well. Yeah. That was some more, more fucked up shit. Yeah. Although it's it's hard to, to know exactly what happened because a lot of stuff yeah. 
a lot of dudes, a lot of Japanese dudes fucking who were killed on that island fighting came from the Nanjing mission. And USGIs were finding photographs on these troops of gang rapes and murders of girls. Mm-hmm. And they didn't know what that was or where it came from. They didn't know that those were Chinese girls. They thought they were other Japanese girls. They couldn't yeah. understand what they were seeing. But no, uh, those dudes got their issue. I don't really have a, a lot of... I mean, the average dude, the average Japanese guy during, during this during this time really hadn't seen combat. He was up on some island. The Marines showed up. They fought. He got his ass kicked. He was hungry. He hadn't been refueled in a long time or fed in a while. The starvation was getting him by the time we got to him. But a lot of those guys, uh, a lot of their elite troops fucking came out of the fucking the Chinese theater. They had done a lot of bad shit. They were cruel. Very cruel. And, you know, they're not the Japanese that you know of t- today. They were, the Imperial Japanese were uh, big, uh, mean, according to uh, the American accounts. Uh, very disciplined, very loyal, very professional soldiers, but ruthless. Real, real ruthless. And they were ruthless to subordinates. So they were mean to each other. There was kind of like a hierarchy. Going they were on just there. general assholes. Yeah. They don't make <laughs> Japanese dudes like that anymore. They all died in the war. Thank fuck. <laughs> yeah. we, don't need, we don't need that business. Come on. It's a different just, time. There's enough assholes in the world as it is. Yeah. We don't need even more assholes. <clears throat> and it particularly, I th- assholes is like not even a strong enough word for the people that pulled off this, this it, shit right here. The average Japanese was fighting for his homeland in a certain way, fighting to create a new homeland in China. He was fighting to keep Americans fucking off of the island because they were just going to rape all the Japanese women. That's what they were told. That's what they were doing to the Chinese women, so they had a count, They had reasons to believe that. So that's why they were crashing their airplanes on fucking aircraft carrier decks because they were just trying to stop at all costs to protect their women because we were headed towards the Japanese main island. So I understand why they did it. It was um, well, hi, just Bokey. a different time. I see a little stumpy different tail. Different time. Pookie. <laughs> crawling around right. down there, it's like meow, 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 meow. technology's changed. War like wars like that can't happen anymore. That's why they don't. Well, like I said, I yeah. I cannot imagine what it must have been like to live through that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and the fact that people that so many people lived through it and yeah. were sort of mainly normal afterward that just blows my mind. Because if I had seen that firsthand, I don't know if I'd have gotten over it. The atomic bomb stopped all these large scale wars like this. It's not possible with the with atomic weaponry. Yeah. You can't amass any troops. They just get hit. That's true. The war of the future will all be what you call terrorists. That's the war of the future. Which, like I said, it's it's not great, but it's smaller scale. Small scale. Small scale and low, what what they call low signature. The the, the soldier of the future won't even be wearing a uniform. Because his camouflage will be be dressed like a civilian. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll have lawyers with him. And political parties with them, and all. They're just, it'll be full spectrum with guys with cameras and just, you know, it's. Warfare always changes. Don't believe what they say on that damn fucking Fallout video game. War never changes. No, it changes all the fucking time. When World War I broke out, the Turks fucking showed up to battle on horseback with curved scimitars. Here we go. Some and everyone was like, what are you even doing? Yeah. <laughs> fucking biplanes showed up, machine gunned them all. From the, and they're like, what the fuck? This isn't fair. This isn't warfare. And they just machine gunned them all. They're like, welcome like, to the 20th century, bitch. Yeah, shit changed. <laughs> well, That's terrible. Yeah. The war that's going on now is fucking very low-key James Bond shit. Invisible stuff, propaganda, mind control, lies, gaslighting, armies of lawyers, internet censorship, fucking changing of the mind, mind control. As a person who used guns to fuck motherfuckers up, they're not very good at it. You can kill a dude, he vanishes, but it doesn't change anybody's mind. New ones appear. They just keep coming and coming. Look at Afghanistan. Couldn't even beat cavemen. Couldn't beat cavemen. Because uh, back the reason why it worked for World War II is because there were wars of genocide. They just fought until they're just all dead. Well, you can't do that now. People will get mad if you do that. So yeah. guns and shit don't. People work. got less mad back then about it, which yeah. is but well, that's which is alarming. Like I said, uh, but but like you said, it was because the I technology. Mean, 
the technology and they didn't really i i feel like they even then didn't really have much of a the same sense of like lives being valuable no. as now no no the old when back in the back in that part of the 20th century warfare was genocide yeah it was genocide our demand on the japanese was unconditional surrender yeah go think about that yeah think about what that means unconditional surrender that means you surrender and we do whatever the fuck we want and you can't bitch about it ah, that's not <laughs> acceptable terms of surrender so they just kept fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting until they go, oh, okay, atomic bombs there, oh, oh, okay. And they had no idea what we were going to do to them. Yeah. What were we going to do, sell all their women into slavery? Were they going to kill them all after the fucking war? You know, that's what I mean. We could have unconditional. thought of that could a be number of horrifying things. Right, right. Well, that's the way war was, you know. You fucked up, fuck up, fucking the cartridge, fucking, and then you fucking burn the city down, kill all the people, sell the children as slaves and dog meat, sow the fields with salt. Never again was there a cartridge. And that was the way, it was genocide. That's the way wars always were, up until recently. Yeah. Which, like I said, I'm, I'm okay with that being in the past, to be honest. It's temporary. It'll go back to that. Well, it might, but I'm kind of hoping. Yeah, only the Western <laughs> civilization stopped that. Other civilizations have no problem with the way it was. If China goes to war, it'll be just like the old-fashioned shit. They're going to kill every fucking one of you. They got concentration camps filled with Uyghurs right now. They don't give a fuck. If you're their enemy, from their point of view, you deserve to die. Your civilization deserves to be extinguished. That's the thinking. And that's the way this was. So it makes more sense when you look at it through that eye, through that viewpoint. Like I said, I will say, though, that even from the beginning, because this Unit 731 wasn't, you know, wasn't found until a little bit later. But the preamble for it, that goes back to like 1932. And the guy that started it was absolutely 100 percent aware that he was one he was not supposed to be doing this and two he knew if he got caught he would be in like a really lot of trouble because even from the beginning he made like everybody that worked there they had to take like fake names and it's like everything had you know innocuous sounding names so nobody would know what they were doing so the it you know it, it was formed knowing that it, they weren't supposed to be doing it so it was very very deliberate you know what i'm saying yeah I kind of need another drink. Are okay, you ready for you know. Okay. What the hell's going on with that computer? It's a, oh, it's a, a baby. Updating. Okay. Well, yeah, it's just kind of like the screen went blue and it was like, something went wrong. We need to like restart your shit. I was like, uh, okay. I don't know how long it'll take. So now it like turned all purple. But, uh, but yeah, so, okay. So let's talk about unit 731. Like I said, that's the one that's like the most famous, but it's not the only one. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so this was actually a secret unit of the, uh, and I'm sure I'm gonna butcher like all these Asian names, so forgive me in advance, uh, the Kwantung Army, who was based in Manchuria. So this is well like a secret unit of that. Now, see, this is what I'm saying about them giving it innocuous names. The name of this unit and the, all of the units like kind of under this purview were the Epidemic Prevention and Water Supply Department. That's what they called it. Um, and it was supposed to be like a research center that was looking into like, you know, disease prevention. Like how do we keep, you know, diseases from spreading among the army and shit like that. And how do we keep the water clean, blah, blah, blah. That's what they said that their stated mission was. However, um, their whole thing was looking into developing biological weapons. Now, in case you guys don't know, biological weapons had been uh pretty much uh you know i believe it was geneva like 1925 right they said you weren't allowed to use biological weapons um so but as soon as the dude that started this whole thing uh whose name was uh ishishiro as soon as he heard that in 1925 he was kind of like yeah we probably should start working on some biological weapons yeah. now that geneva convention has like made it illegal uh because we might need those you know you never know so, yeah, basically he started uh, doing that. Now, the, the idea of... The Geneva I, Protocol, rather, not the Geneva Convention. The whole reason why you make a biological weapon is that you can attack your enemy with a biological weapon, and it's deniable. You could say, I didn't do that. Nature. Nature did that. I didn't do that. So never forget that. Never forget that. The reason for bio biological weapons is to hide the attack. 
Yeah, because you can just say that... I didn't do that. Yeah, just a germ got in the yeah. water. Like, it was right. just a disease spreading or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. So, Ishishiro, he had actually uh, done field study for two years um, in the U.S. and in Europe in our research facilities. So, like I said, as soon as he heard... Uh, you know, at the Geneva Protocol in 1925, that biological weapons were not allowed. Um, at least you weren't allowed to use them on urban populations. I think that was the wording. As soon as he heard that, he's like, yeah, we need to start like setting up some shit to develop some. Uh, but he knew that it was uh, not allowed and he knew that he would get in trouble. So he was like, okay, well, we're going to establish all these units under these like euphemisms and then we're going to start, like, uh, working on it. So it's going to be, like, super top secret. So there, there was a thing called the Epidemic Prevention Research Laboratory. Um, and he set that up, you know, not to, like, in the early 1930s. Now, the thinking, even from the very beginning, the, so this wasn't even a thing that developed... You know what I mean? Because sometimes, like, shit happens where it's kind of like, well, we started out doing this research on weapons or whatever, and then it, like, it just devolved into, oh, and by the way, we're blowing up babies. This seems like, even from the very beginning, um, that Ishii was kind of like, okay, well, we're going to be using these biological weapons on humans. Therefore, we need to test them on humans. Like, that seemed to be something that he was pretty adamant about from the start, right? Um, and he wanted to kind of, like, set it up as quickly as he could set it up. So, at this point, so Japan had been occupying northeastern China. And 1932, there was, uh, I guess it was like a puppet state uh, called, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Manchu Manchukuo? I guess. Manchukuo. Manchukuo, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they set that up in 1932. Now, this was kind of like, since this was Japanese occupied, they're like, okay, well, we want a trial run of this, you know, research unit that we want to set up. So we're going to set up one here and see if we can get, like, get away with it, essentially. So they set up something called the Togo unit. And um, they set this up in a village whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Uh, they set that up in 1933. Again, this was a secret unit, and the guy that was running it was, like, the vice chief of staff of the uh, Kwantung Army. And as I said, this was kind of set up as, like, a trial run to see if they could get away with it, to see if they could do stuff without anybody, like, fucking with them, and see if the experiments were going to produce anything that they could use. Um, all of the doctors at this particular facility were military doctors. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they all took uh, false names because they knew that they would get in trouble otherwise. Um, and there were about 10 doctors working there, like military doctors, and there was about a, uh, another 100 like staff members like of various other in various other uh, capacities. So that uh, went pretty well. So in 1936, they decided they were going to establish Unit 731. Uh, so pretty much the first, um, I guess the first reference to it was like in a memo that came out in like spring of 1936. And, uh, basically they're kind of like, so they set up unit 731 and then they also set up two other ones. Um, because, okay. So they set up this other one. These were also like biological weapons ones. The, the, uh, one of the other ones they set up was called the Kwantung Army Military Horse Epidemic Prevention Workshop. Uh, later on, that would just be called Manchuria Unit 100. And, uh, you know, so that was that. And then they had a chemical weapons development unit called the Kwantung Army Technical Testing Department. So they basically said one of them was for testing, like, how to prevent disease in humans. And the other one was how to prevent disease in horses. Those were the other two that they were setting up, aside from Unit 731. So Emperor Hirohito himself uh, gave approval for setting up these uh, units. And then they started like setting up all the testing department. So basically unit 731, it got you know the permission to move forward. So they moved into like from the unpronounceable village that it was in to start with, uh, they moved it to a hospital in a place called Harbin, Harbin. I'm not really sure how that's pronounced, but 
I'm sure I'm close enough. So they moved it there. Now, this was uh, kind of temporary because they were actually building like a permanent one in uh, Ping Fan, which was outside of the city. So that was finished in 1939. So after they moved over to that facility, then they kind of like went, they, you know, they had the military doctors and the earlier ones, but then they kind of started farming or like trying to get in like private sector medical researchers uh, that had worked in, you know, universities or at other hospitals or whatever. So at this uh, point, when they first moved to their newly built facility, um, they got a bunch of like professors from uh, Kyoto Imperial University. That was like in 1938. Uh, the staff, they had two bacteriologists, three pathologists, two physiologists, and a researcher specializing in animal experimentations. A uh, year later, another group came, um, you know, with uh, some more doctors, and then they had like other, you know, staff as well. So they also established, I mean, since the, you know, the, the war had been expanding throughout China, you know, after the, after 1937. So then they started having an other units established in any large major Chinese city, like in the area, like near the war front or whatever. Um, they ended up calling these units. They also called them, they were under the auspices of epidemic prevention and water supply department. So they had like unit 1855 that was in Beijing, uh, unit 1644 that was in Nanjing. They had like a bunch of other ones. So like I said, 731 wasn't the only one. They kind of, any major city that they came to, they would establish one in there too. So they, and honestly, they called this the Ishii network. Like, you know, the guy that founded it, uh, that's what they called it. Cause it was like a whole bunch of different ones. So by the time that all of these had been set up, like, you know, right around 1939 or whatever, uh, they estimate that the staff of all of these was over 10,000 people. So that's, it's pretty big. Now let's get into, like I mentioned earlier, they're not entirely sure how many people died um, at the hands of these research facilities let's call them that look at this shit what's she doing she's laying on her back with her she's back there going she knocked out fell asleep like on her back she fell asleep oh my god that's so funny what okay, she's she like what she's we like talk about me? <laughs> why are you talking about me why yeah. you, this is not funny in the least yeah. so as i mentioned earlier um they estimate they're not entirely sure but they estimate somewhere between 200,000 and 580,000 people. And like I said, a lot of these were essentially civilians. I mean, they were villagers, uh, prisoners of war, just basically, because the, the shitty thing, this is so scary. I mean, basically when they would occupy a city um, and the researchers were kind of like, hey, we need, uh, we need some experiment subjects, go out and get some. And they would just go out and get some. Yeah. Like I, we need the, we need X amount of, they called them Maruta. They called them logs because, <laughs> well, beca well, because the, <laughs> no, the cover story was that where these were set up, that they were lumber mills. Yeah. So all of the people that they put in, that they experimented on, they called them logs. Hmm. So they would say something like how many logs fell today? Like how many people died or whatever? Isn't that fucked up? Now, where was this location again? Well, this one was in, um, what's it called? Han, Han, something. Han. Manchu, Manchuko. No, 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 no. That was that was an earlier thing. That was an earlier thing. Harbin, Harbin. Harbin. Where is yeah. Harbin? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not real familiar with okay. Chinese geography. This must be this must be the Japanese occupation uh, occupational it is. army in China. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these were all in China. Okay. Yeah. These were all in China. Yeah. Well, they were already gonna they were already gonna mostly depopulate China. They they wanted that place. They needed the they needed, yeah. they needed the natural resource and the, the 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 Japanese islands were getting kind of densely populated. This had been going on for thousands of years. Japan, Korea, and China had were in a fucking basically a race war for fucking thousands of years. They didn't like each other at all. So Clearly. It just got, yeah. So the Chinese the Japanese saw the Chinese as fucking subhuman barbarians. The Chinese had been in a warlord period. 
up until this point. Still going on. Chiang Kai-shek was one of the warlords, one of the better ones, which it was the warlord period of China was kind of like Japan's feudal era, era with, you know what I mean, where they're all fighting to fucking secure a fucking a shogunate type of deal. Yeah. It's like that. So the Japanese are kind of seeing them as backwards, like something from hundreds of years ago. And uh, they wanted to, to depopulate that area and get in there. Same thing the Germans wanted to do to Russia. When Germany declared war on Russia, there were no terms for Russia. The term was die. It was a war of annihilation, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of, in some ways, what Japan was... Although, Japan didn't say that to the rest of the world. They were saying they were coming in there as kind of like peacekeepers, that they were part of a Chinese alliance, but that's not what they did when they got in there. Ch uh, China was not a unified state, so you could get in there and you could fucking run amok. Uh, which they did yeah. in, in this situation. Yeah. So, yeah, so over the course of the whole, like, over the span of the whole network, I guess... Uh, they're estimating, like I said, between 200,000 and 580,000 people dying. Um, as for just Unit 731, they think maybe 3,000, and that was men, women, and children, just at that one unit, like yeah. that one hospital. Now, uh, like I said, you, you had like the military police, essentially, which I think were called the Kemp Kempitai, Kempitai, something like that. Kemputai, I think. Yeah, um, they would just, like I said, they, it, it was basically like filling an order, like going to yep. McDonald's and ordering some fries. Go some, yeah. Hey, go get some people to experiment on. Although, like I said, they didn't call them people. They, they called them logs or maruta, yeah. which, you know. Um, so they think probably like the vast majority of the people killed were Chinese. Like I said, they were just villagers that were that happened to be in the occupied town prisoners of war other people like that people they didn't like whatever uh there were also some russians in there some mongolians some koreans um also probably um allegedly a handful of americans handful of europeans maybe some indians maybe some australians and new zealanders who were uh pow's may have been experimented on also like some people that uh, came out and told their stories later, said that there had been people of other nationalities there, but it was largely Chinese. So, yeah. So basically, it's kind of like... Uh, God, this is so messed up. It's like fucking... Now, okay, so the fucked up thing about this, I mentioned them being called logs because, like I said, one of the cover stories was that these places were lumber mills. So it almost started out as like a fucking sick joke that they just called the people logs. And I guess it was just easier for dehumanization purposes. You weren't calling them a person. Um, and uh, also some fucked up shit too, is that the, some of the experiments that they did, they actually did um, publish like some of the results of their experiments in actual like scientific journals. But of course, they didn't say they were experimenting on humans because that's unethical and it wouldn't have been published. So they would just like write it, but they would say, oh, we experimented on Manchurian monkeys or long tailed monkeys. That's what they would say. That's, they wouldn't say that they were human subjects. So, like I said, it was kind of like mostly Chinese um, and not all of them. Like I said, a lot of them were just like random people they picked up, but some of them were criminals you know, that they had caught. Some of them were, you know, really like anti-Japanese, you know, protesters or whatever, political prisoners, um, obviously mentally handicapped, homeless people, because they're, of course, going to get picked on because they're powerless. And just anybody that was like acting in a way that they didn't really like. Uh, but then there was also just random ass. They would just pick up babies, pregnant women, whoever. You know, it, it was just whoever they could get their hands on, pretty much. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, oops, there's like a little, there's a little bug here. So we're going to talk about some of the shit that they did to these fucking people. It was just kind of like, I read this quote. I think this was either on the Wikipedia page or on the, um, there's a, there's a site. I think it's just unit71.org or whatever it is. And it's just kind of like, because there's a museum there now in that town that, they finally put one there. I don't remember when they put it there, but there is a museum there that's like talks about the atrocities because for a long time, like Japan wouldn't um, acknowledge it. And even to this day, as far as I, cause I watched a documentary, like a fairly recent documentary and they were saying that there is kind of like a, um, 
like a you know like a right wing nationalist type of uh group that is kind of like holocaust deniers would be they're basically like saying none of this ever happened uh so they don't you know so they don't want anybody talking about it because they think it's all bullshit which okay but yeah so there's that whole uh thing too but so here's this uh i read a quote by this one guy who had actually seen what is, what is that piece of pizza my bed oh no it's got black olives on it doesn't it oh yeah it does yeah prefer. grody from and the other day, I and pepperonis. It. I made it from the other day. I can't eat. I'll, I'll just get heartburn and I'll just have heartburn for the rest of the show. Drinking on an empty stomach with that lemonade. Ooh. Yeah. Phil says, what was the name of the documentary? Um, shit. It was just called Unit 70, 731 colon something. I can't remember. It was just one of the first ones that came up on YouTube. I can't remember which one it was, but it was like, it was a really good one though. It kind of went like a lot into it, but yeah. So like I said, there is a museum there now. So they do actually acknowledge it. So there's this one guy that he wasn't there, but he did like see videos of some of the experiments. Cause apparently they videotaped it because of course they did. Um, and his quote was, uh, some of the experiments had nothing to do with advancing the capability of germ warfare or of medicine. There is such a thing as professional curiosity. What would happen if we did such and such? What medical purpose was served by performing and studying beheadings? None at all. That was just playing around. Yeah. Professional people too like to play. That's what he said. Yeah. So base, So it's kind of like, that's what I mean. It's like some of these experiments, like I said, I'm not condoning them, obviously, and you shouldn't like experiment on fucking humans. That's fucked up. But... Some of the stuff you could at least see, you know, the reasoning behind it. It's like, oh, well, let's find out, you know, how long it takes this disease to kill a person. Like, it's fucked up to experiment on a human, like I said, but you can see why they would do it. Some of the stuff they did here, not really sure why they did it other than just sadism. You know what they I mean? They had prisoners they had to get rid of. Yeah. I mean, it's just, fuck, man. Yeah, and Justice for Me says the Japanese call it Chinese propaganda. Yeah, some some people do. Well, there is, like I said, just like just like uh, in the West, there's, you know, a small contingent of Holocaust deniers. You have the same kind of thing that happens in Japan. You do have, like, a contingent of Unit 731, like that war atrocity, like, deniers. And then you got a contingent of bullshitters like the North Korea, North Koreans. They will take photographs from these incidents of like the of like Japanese soldiers executing or fucking or beheading Chinese civilians and then recrop those photos and say it's American soldiers killing North Koreans. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're like looking at that hand and that sword. Like, yeah, oh, that's definitely an American sword. Yes. You yeah. know, sure. Yeah, Americans are real known for going around killing people. With with, yeah, with, with very curved swords, yeah. That, that's a thing that a lot of us do. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, it's all about the cropping. It's all about the cropping. Yeah. <laughs> you never see the Americans. You just well, like see I said, dime. shit, man. I could, yeah. honestly, I've been doing Photoshop so long, I could probably start my own whole propaganda yeah. network. Yeah. I, can make a, I can make a photograph of whatever you want. Oh. <laughs> I can make a photograph. Just look of at the North everyone. Korean American War Crimes Museum. You'll see some crazy shit in there. That you can see it. They'll give you yeah. tours through it. You won't well, see a single American soldier. <laughs> just a bunch of dying Asian people. And they're just like right out of the yeah, frame of this frame. picture. Where's the people? Yeah, where, where's the American dude? Yeah, is the American devil that killed this person? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like, gee, it's funny they're never in the photo. They're though. never in the photo. <laughs> They could have at least, like, photoshopped or, like, drawn him in there, like, a little smiley face. No. Like, a little smiley face guy with, like, an American flag shirt it's on. It's another or universe. It's another reality. <laughs> North that, Koreans are That would be super funny if somebody tried to find North Koreans are a trip. They're in a parallel <laughs> universe. But they know it's lies. Yeah. They know. They can't question it. They'll get in trouble. Well, yeah, everyone. It's yeah. just kind of one of those things. It's like, well, we've all just decided that we're all going to go along with the bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, they all know it's lies. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about some of the fun stuff they did to some of these poor fucking people that they just randomly picked up. So let's start with a good one. Vivisection. Yeah. 
Which, if you guys didn't know, that's basically uh, they start dissecting you while you're still alive. Yeah, no anesthesia. With no anesthesia. Uh, basically, the reasoning behind them doing this, and they did a lot of this, was that because what they were doing is that they would deliberately infect a lot of the people with diseases, like lots of different ones, and they were saying, well, we want to see what the progress of the disease is um, while the patient is still alive. So we want to be able to, like, see the progress of the disease, like, on their organs. Yes, you cut them open. Yeah. So you cut them open and, like, keep them alive and, like, cut them open and, like, watch the disease, like, ravaging their organs uh, for research purposes. Yeah. That was kind of like, so, yeah. So basically they would strap people to a table and cut them open but like keep them alive yeah, but it, but i mean if they died they'd just be like oh well bring in the next log that's yeah. what they would say or go get some new ones just like fucking like i said like ordering some fucking fries fucking ugh, so gross well, yeah it's funny because you've given them these diseases you know it's going to kill them but for some reason you want to watch the process and somehow document it as if that changes the fact or the, your knowledge of their death really doesn't help it as a weapon. It's just funny how they do That's that. what I'm saying. Well, see, that's why I'm saying that a very small percentage of this, well, you could see where like scientifically, yeah, that knowledge might be useful. I think like 80, 90% of this stuff would have not been useful in any no. context. They were just doing it because they were fucked up psychopaths. The only thing you need to know is how long does it take to kill them? How long does it take before they become incapacitated? Then the next thing you'd want to know is, is there a cure? And then, so they'd be getting people sick, seeing how long it takes before they're incapacitated. And then you'd be working on a cure to, to it. Because you'd want to know how long is it going to take for the enemy to come up with a cure? Something you're going to know. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm not condoning it. I don't think anybody should do it because it's fucked up. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that in some of the cases, you could see the justification behind it, quote yeah. unquote. But a lot of this shit, I don't really see any value in it. And and a lot of it, the shit is like stuff that they already knew. You also want to cure. You want to know the cure so when it blows back on you, you can cure your own people of it. Yeah. Because uh, there's no sense in using a weapon that will affect you also. You want it just to affect them. I will say, too, that... Um, between like the 200,000, 580,000 people that died, um, there were also, they estimate, 1,700 Japanese soldiers that died when one of the uh, one of their own biological weapons uh, got kind of blow back. Yeah. yeah, it's a blowback on them. Can't, fi can't feel too bad about that, gotta say, but. Well, hell, it depends on how you look at it. There's a lot of nice guys in those Japanese units that were just innocent fucking farmers. That's what I mean. It's kind of I mean? like, it's it's really hard. I, I mean, I don't know. It. Well, yeah, the knee jerk thing is to be like, oh, yeah. fuck them because yeah. they were doing it. But everybody's an individual and not yeah. everybody like agreed with that shit. No. Not everybody was. No. In that unit, there's going to be some sweet old fucking farm kid just going, yeah, yeah, mama, you know, writing back to his mama. And he, some of them might not have known that know, like they, they what was know going on. Going on. No, they don't know. So it's like you can't. That's that's why I kind of get well. You can't punish everybody because yeah. like most of the people probably didn't have anything to do with what was going on or didn't really have any choice in the matter or whatever. We live in a, an age of blanket moralism. You know what I mean? Where everybody goes, well, you're you're the bad guy. Fuck you. Everybody thinks the other guy's the bad guy. Everybody thinks they're the good guy. The Japanese guys all thought they were the good guys. They didn't know these experiments were going on. Well, like I said, I kind of feel like most villains like think like probably the most horrible people everybody everybody that, you got good people mixed up in this on all sides yeah okay that's what i mean and it's like i know i kind of make jokes about it's like oh everyone sucks and stuff like that obviously they don't most people are fine or, or most people are good or just indifferent yeah. or whatever most people wouldn't do evil shit just right out the box here's you know a, what i'm saying so, but circumstances yeah. under certain circumstances they Here, might. here's another story the allies find one of the first concentration camps, okay? They're, they, they're keeping the prisoners inside the camp. They're not releasing them. The orders are, don't feed them. The reason why is because they could kill them. But guys were sneaking food across anyway. They were also, Allied soldiers, American soldiers, were giving these prisoners knives. And then they were killing capos in there. 
all right? Because they had capos who had kind of pretended like they were prisoners also. They were German prisoners who were kind of like the wardens of these basically ethnic Russians and Jewish prisoners that are in the concentration camp. American soldiers saw this camp and only about a couple miles away, there were some surrendered Germans who had surrendered out of the war, right? Knew nothing about that camp. They went and massacred those German prisoners. Yeah, because it's today. like... Had nothing to do with right. that camp. Didn't even know it existed. That's what I mean. It's like, well, I ha I'm angry at this, because and I don't have happened. anybody to direct right. it at. Like right. uh, the the people responsible aren't right. here in front of me, so, but I feel like the need to blame somebody. Yeah, and you're here. Right, and and those which is fucked up. Don't do and that. And those German soldiers were just kind of regular guys. Uh, you know what I mean? Teenage guys, guys in their early twenties who had surrendered because they didn't believe in this fucking bullshit. So they got killed because some other guys found a camp over there. That's what I mean. Yeah, That's why so you can't you can't blame you can't blame everybody for what everybody the for is what. Doing. So yeah, because you don't know. Like yeah, you, you know. don't know who knows what. Yeah, they and might not dudes, know anything about it, or they might dudes, not they, agree with it, they, and they're just trying to keep yeah. their head down so they don't get shot or whatever. Luckily, some American guys jumped in there to stop a slaughter. Some of them were saved. You know what I mean? Because these were just soldiers. They're just German soldiers. They just happened to be on the other side. They knew nothing about those camps. Well, they, they weren't. Yeah, they weren't the ones that had set they, them up. Right. You know. They knew nothing about them. They weren't over there. I mean, I get it. I get that you like. Oh, we can't trust them. Blah blah blah. But it's like you can't. You know, you can't punish them for the shit war that, was rapidly coming to an end. Right. And they were just going to go home. They were. They were sick of the shit. Yeah, that's what I. Like I said, that's why it's hard because you can't. You so, can't blame an entire country no. for like what the government is doing, for example, exactly. because a lot of people probably don't agree you, with it. They that don't shit. agree with it, and they just get drafted. Those guys were all drafted, and they did not, they didn't have choice. So, when you're a profession, have the background of a professional soldier, you have to understand that you're dealing with systems. And not, and I was in a system that it was doing shit I didn't know about. Why would they hold me accountable for something that happened somewhere else that I wouldn't agree with, and they were doing it because some. Motherfucker in behind a desk somewhere ordered it to be to, to happen. You that, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, that you didn't even know that. I guy didn't know that, that guy. I didn't even know that it happened. So it, it's a war between systems. You can't let that shit be personal. You know. Yeah. The other individuals in the in, in the enemy army are not really your enemy. It's their chain of command is the enemy. Yeah, they're just kind of doing what they're. They're told. the lackeys. I mean, you know. Yeah. No, they'll fight. But when they've given up, they've surrendered. That's it. They're 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 out of the fight. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was the whole point. That's the point. I mean, I thought we had all right. agreed that like you surrendered yeah. to the others, like just don't fuck with them anymore. Right. They surrendered, right? Exactly. That's the rules. Their 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 authorities or their chain of command was committing war crimes. They surrendered to you. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna get even with them by committing a war crime? By massacring Yeah, that makes them. you as bad as, exactly. as bad as them. That exactly. makes you as bad as them. Yep. Yeah. It's like, don't do that. Be the better person. Yeah. Just be the better person. Granther's Hammer asks a question for Tom. When the Chinese invade the U.S. sometime in the future, will they be conducting nasty experiments on Americans? No. They, the Americans will be long be gone. That general came out and said that they had enough they had enough biological weapons they could unleash on the United States to totally depopulate it, and they can walk in here, not a shot fired. And it run to the bathroom. China has biological weapons. And uh, no, that's that's part of their their war strategy. If they wanted this place, which I don't think they really do, they have already a, a lot of land. The more land you have, the harder it is to keep control of over. And um, I think the Chinese are happy in on the Chinese mainland. Um, but they threatened you know, that that general openly threatened in a newspaper there that. They would hit the United States with bioweapons and totally empty it out, and they could walk. They could just walk in here, just totally unopposed. That's their idea. Is it possible? Yeah. Yeah. If you're willing to kill everybody and to just fucking straight up do a genocide, and the system you work for is all for it, then yeah, you could do it. The technology's there. The, the, what, what, what Dr. Strangelove says, but the will, you must have the will to do it. And um, the Chinese are at a stage of development where they're just starting to taste power. They have the will. 
I think. We have to see. They would only do it if there would be if if they knew there would be no repercussions. And um, this is a time where I don't think there would be any re repercussions if they were to do that. If a bunch of people started dying around here, they would just think it was COVID. They wouldn't think it was a Chinese biotech. It might be one of the same. Who knows? But yeah, if I was a Chinese general, now would be a good time when the United States is weak and divided. Yeah. Good thinking, Grampers. I don't know. They really want this place. That's what I was thinking. I don't. Really think, <laughs> I don't think they really want this place because I don't really think they want this. They've place. been on the Chinese mainland for fucking six thousand years. It's like it's so far. Fuck and um, if they were to spread out and have less population density, they wouldn't be able to control their people as effectively. They have problems controlling their people on the Chinese mainland to a certain extent. They have little rebellions and riots all the time. Um, they're trying to man up right now. They're going into a war posture over Taiwan. That, I think that's all they want. I think they just want Taiwan. I think they're helping the destabilization of the United States just to, just to make sure we're not strong enough to defend Taiwan. I think that's the idea. Okay, we can go ahead. All right. So, yes, we were talking about vivisection, like I said. Fun. Um, also, another thing they would do is they would, they wanted to study blood loss. Like I said, this sounds like pretty bullshitty. This, this is just like you wanting to do some serial killer shit and getting away with it. That's what I'm saying. They want to study blood loss. So they're like, hey, let's take these prisoners or logs and start cutting their limbs off. And maybe just for funsies, let's cut them off and like attach, like they're switch their arms around. <laughs> Or switch, what? Putting all one switch their arms way. around or it's like switch their legs around and shit like they would do shit like that on the same person or between guys oh i'm not really sure okay i'm not really sure probably on the same person okay, while yeah. they're still strapped on the table hey yeah. what what would happen if we put their arms on backwards wouldn't that be funny that's what i just kind of feel like that was yeah that yeah somebody said earlier like earlier on and i i didn't read it and i meant to but it's like they said the the atrocities in here sound like something an edge lord would come up with yeah. it is it's just kind of like that's why i think that they weren't they knew full well that they weren't like doing experiments they were just doing fucked up shit because they could do fucked up shit because yeah. they could get away with it yeah um some people have said that you know the japanese were not as professional as the germans and stuff um, but you're you're assuming you're you're assuming that the Germans were professional. There was a lot of um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The German system had a lot of redundancy to it, and it was very compartmentalized. It wasted a lot of fucking resources, and it did it did crazy shit too. It was a, a series of fiefdoms, and some of it was about grift, getting state money, get, getting government money for a project so you could buy a house. So the Japanese kind of did the same thing. They had some secret weapon programs that were just as good as the, as the Germans. Um, and that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing basically somebody abusing their fiefdom. They got a bunch of money. They got a bunch of power from the, from the Japanese government. And now they're just running around having fun. And that's, now they can a, just, yeah, that's, that's kind that's, that's of the, that, I know that's fucked up, but that's kind of the impression that I got. Yeah. Like the more that I read about this and that makes it even more horrifying yeah. because it's like, yeah. The fact that they could just be so cavalier, yeah. and then they're writing up, so they're probably writing up sophisticated reports and an, they back to the government, to their government, to 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 assure further funding. Well, but, like I said, you know, they even I think you were in the other room, but I yeah. said some of them, like some of the doctors and stuff that were working there, they even like published papers, like in peer-reviewed journals. But of course, they didn't say they were operating in humans. They said it yeah. was monkeys. Monkeys, yeah. But they, but they totally like so. In a way, they were, like, ashamed of it because they knew they didn't want it to get out, but they were kind of, like, having fun with it, too, and that is, like, really, really disturbing. Well, a lot of times they had to, like, hide it because they were, yeah. top, they were top secret. Um, yeah. They were, already given, they were already given the orders that this isn't happening. This is a top secret program. So you can't say anything about human experimentation or anything. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Monkeys, then. Yeah, monkeys. I mean, That's I kind right. of feel like 99.99% of people in the world, other than like psychopaths, um, you say human experimentations, everyone's like, nah, bro. Yeah. No. You know what I mean? Well, in this in this situation for the Japanese are in, humans are fucking cheaper than monkeys, from their point of view. You're getting Chinese people just is cheaper. Yeah, that's what I mean. You oh, they're everywhere. The Chinese. And we hate them, so. Yeah, we're going to kill them anyway. Let's use those. Yep. They're just logs. Yeah. That's so yeah. messed up. 
like I said, this is happening in the f from what they believe is the apocalypse. They're thinking yeah. this is do or do or die. We got to get this done, or we're all going to die. That was part of the ultra nationalism, Japanese ultra nationalists. There was some truth to it, but they were overreacting too much. You think? Um, yeah. Yeah. A well, little. their thinking was is that their industries were expanding by leaps and bounds, and they and, and the the Chinese homeland islands were going to run out of natural resources so they had to have china or they would all be paupers and that japan would become weak and it would vanish and so they started fucking around on the mainland of china america got pissed and we put an oil embargo on them which put them under so much stress it was a do or die situation we have to fight and defeat america or we die so that's in a way you could say america fucking tightening its fucking grasp on it helped kick this war off a lot. Although they were going to probably do that to China anyway, so it probably didn't make a difference. It just speeded up a process that was going to happen anyway. And Justice for Me says, uh, reminiscent of your Girl Next Door review, yeah, uh, torturing someone and everyone thinks it's standard operating procedure. Yeah, that's, I think that's what kind of bothers me is I kind of feel like, as much as I think that most people are, you know, marginally okay, most people wouldn't do shit like this right out of the box, but under certain circumstances, if you were kind of deadened to it over a time, or if you were given like a justification, maybe more people than you think of would do this kind of shit. And I'm not saying that everybody would, because they've done experiments like this, you know, where people thought they were torturing people or whatever. And, you know, about half people were like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. But some people... Well... The Some Germans, people did. The Germans went out of their way to select the right man for the right job. They knew who, they did. They knew about psychology. They knew who was a sociopath or a psychopath, and they would put they would give them these jobs. And then everybody the under them, I feel like yeah. you would want to put people that would just like do shit without questioning it. They were from shady backgrounds. A lot of those people. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of those people were sent to places like this as kind of like punishment because they did something fucked up somewhere else. And they said, "Okay, you're going to go to this this unit." Or you go to prison. It's because kind of how story. could you just stand there and yeah. watch someone yeah. alive get yeah. their arms cut off? Yeah. And sw like, how could you now, I don't know. not be like, stop it? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, please don't do that. You know, know what know. I mean? I don't understand how you could like not. I don't know if that's the Japanese. The first time you saw that. I don't know if this is the, if that was the Japanese selection process for places like this. But it was the selection process, more or less, that the Germans had. And the Germans and the Japanese did communicate quite a bit. They uh, modeled... Japan kind of modeled a lot of its stuff, a lot of itself, after what what Germany was doing when, when it came to uh, high-tech weapons. So they probably figured... They probably had kind of a German model. They knew who was a psycho or a mad scientist, and they went to these kind of units. Dudes that got in trouble had a choice. They either go to this unit and work or they go to jail for something that they did somewhere else. That might have been, yeah. Like so they might have been like drawing from kind yeah. of like the criminal underworld. Yeah. The Germans definitely did. The Germans had an entire... Well, that explained a lot. Yeah, the Germans had an entire fucking SS, I think, what was it called? The thirty, the thirty, th the 34th, the 44th, the 34th Panzer SS, I think is what it was. And they were all taken from prison. And those are the ones that did a lot of those damn war crimes that the Russians were pissed off at. You know, burning down, killing children with bayonets in the orphanages that they would capture and fucking raping bunches of women and setting, putting everybody in the barn and setting it on fire. That was that one SS division taken out of damn prison. I saw a documentary about that yeah. not too long ago. Actually. And, and the, the, the commander of that unit was a pedo. He was, he was on his way to prison. You either fucking... Under, raping underage girls and he either and he had been to prison for it already so he was going back to prison so he for was it. already he was a up. serial sex offender yeah okay so um so we're already like not this is a person that yeah not, has a not yeah. has a good like moral standard. they used them for eternal security a lot kind of like solder car terror troops out of dune to keep people in line inside occupied territory but as the, as the Reich started to collapse, they actually fought well against the Russians and died. Most of them died fighting the Russians. Um, and they weren't soldiers. They were criminals that were trained as soldiers. They worked out pretty good, which uh, you would think that you couldn't control those dudes. But as long as you sent them to an enemy area, no, they did well. 
Well, I kind of feel like most... You didn't want them around your people. Well, most of the time, people that have those kinds of, like, criminal mindsets... Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you give them license yeah. to do whatever they want, like, just, hey, don't do it to us, just do it to those, to the enemy people over yeah. there, then, yeah, you'll probably get, like, a. it's like you're not going to get in trouble. The other SS generals were uncomfortable around them. They didn't want to even be associated with them. They were like, get, keep those motherfuckers deployed far from us. We didn't want to be around them. I mean, in a way, if you think about yeah. it, it's actually, like, a pretty smart tactical move. Yeah, well, instead of sending them to prison, you fucking send them into combat, and then you send them on difficult messages and then missions, and then they all died anyway. They died fighting the Russians. So it's win-win. So it's kind of like a win-win. They yeah. knew what they were doing. Well, like I said, now that, now that you say that, it makes total sense. Yeah. Because like I said, it's it's a good way to get rid, rid get of Get rid of your criminals. One way or the other. Yep. And you can also like fuck up your own. Some of them did survive and they kind of like had a fucking some heroic swagger to them. But, you know, we're talking about a few handfuls of them survived. Yeah. Survived the war. I mean, but, you know, they're all dead now, I'm sure. I hope so. Oh, they're all dead. Too bad there's not a hell. Because they'd probably all be... Well, we don't know exactly what those dudes who survived, who they were. They were all individuals. You know what I mean? They might have been a carjackers and shit like that. You don't know who survived. First Power 100 said, This reminds me of the Iceman Richard Kuklinski episode, where it was mentioned that under the right circumstances, he would make a damn good soldier. That's what I'm saying. It's just kind of like... Somebody like Kuklinski, like I said, he's kind of an interesting dude because he was just doing shit for a job, which in a way sounds worse, but... I don't know. I don't know if it is, Soldiers though. just do the shit for the job. That's what I mean. So, I, I don't know. Like, it's still bad, but it's like, I don't know if it's worse than somebody that just does it, like, for funsies or because yeah. they get off on it. I kind of feel like that's worse. Every mercenary professional soldier gets off on it or they wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> I like this. You know. I know, but I mean, I don't know. But there, but there's, like, a, it's a difference of degree is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know I what I'm saying? I, I, Every, I everything's on a on a spectrum. So there's just what mission will you take and what will you not take? What side do you want to fight on? You know, do you want to fight for the underdog or do you want to oppress the, do you want to oppress the underdog? That's, that's uh, the it, question. always, it's always the first thing, at, le what? at least in my situation. What? Opp <laughs> oppress the underdog? No, that, that was the second thing you said. The what first if the thing? underdogs are bad though? Well, that depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, everything's a point of view. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, Ice Man Kuklinski. Okay, so, what were we talking about? Okay, so, yeah, so they're cutting off limbs while the people are still alive. Switching them around. Like I said, just for shits and giggles, I guess. This is fucked up. Uh, also, sometimes, they would, also while the prisoners were still alive, they would take their stomachs out and then hook up their esophagus right to their intestines. Like Damn. I said, what possible medical reason could you have for doing that fucking with them that's what i mean there's yeah. no reason for doing that really you're just doing it because you're having a good time yeah and yeah, they wanted to know if a person could live without a stomach but no you can't I just, this almost seems like exists. every day yeah it just kind of is like they turned up to work and it's like i feel like the the people at the top like the top echelon like I said, we're probably a bunch of psychos and it's like, oh, I love my job. I'm going to turn up today and it's like, what can we do today to just like, I wonder if a person could live without a stomach. No. Let's let's try that out. You're I just kind of feel like that's... Reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of like, can we not... I mean, can we just like... Um, we we record, can just extrapolate. Did they even record how long it took for a person to die without their, their stomach? Oh, I don't know. Probably. Okay. But I, I just kind of feel like it was this whole thing where they were just they were just doing it because it entertained them. Yeah. There's no possible medical reason you can no, have for that. The opportunity. It's like you have a stomach for a reason. Uh, you evolved that for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, why would you want to take someone's stomach away just because you wanted to? Say, oh, we're just curious to see. Maybe if, they wanted to know. Just in case. They wanted to know. My stomach ever falls out. Maybe they wondered if what happens if you got stomach cancer? Can you just take the stomach out? Can you keep a person alive? After I'm sure that. that's how they justify how it they to justify, themselves. Yeah. Holy crap. But they would like take out they would like take out little pieces of other organs. Let's take out part of their brain. Let's take yeah. out one of their lungs. Let's yeah. take out part of their liver. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and they did this shit while they were alive too, while they were awake. Yeah. Yeah, they were awake. Yeah. No anesthesia. Yeah. What po look. This, it's just it's just yeah. sadism. Yeah. That's all it is at yeah. this point. It's just sadism. Yeah, even the Germans didn't do that kind of shit. That's what I mean. This is yeah. fucked up. 
So yeah, so like I said, the whole point of Unit 731, or so they said, was to develop a biological weapon. So that was kind of like a big part, other than all the vivisection and stuff, which apparently they just did for fun. Um, the biological warfare shit, they did a lot of stuff uh, with that as well. Now, they actually ended up breeding like a, a strain of plague infested fleas in their labs. This was unit 731 and one of the other units, which was unit 1644. And they had dropped those on pl uh, with planes on a couple of Chinese cities in the early 1940s. Now, this ended up killing uh, many, many, many thousand people because uh, they made these, they these fleas had bubonic plague. So it was, it was effective? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It killed a bunch of people. It makes you wonder, had the body count been bigger and faster, had they just dropped fire on them? That's what I mean. That's why it See, seems like this kind it. of shit was just like, it's just like creative ways to be yeah. a monster. The only thing that you could say is that it might have been more deniable. That you could use it and then say, no, we didn't attack you. That's the only, like a stealth, stealth. Weapon. It was, it was fleas. That'd be the only way. Fleas. You guys are just dirty and you have fleas. And the fleas gave yeah, you the we didn't have Yeah, we didn't have anything to do with those fleas. That would be yeah. the only good thing that that would be used for. They essentially but, dropped like ceramic bombs yeah. full of fleas. bubonic plague carrying fleas yeah. on various uh, villages in China and killed tens of yeah. thousands of people with bubonic plague. And honestly, like uh, a couple of the documentaries I saw, um, there were people still alive many years later that still had like wounds on their legs that like that wouldn't heal yeah like that still had like leftover shit like you know older people from that time that still had wounds that hadn't healed in like decades from that era yeah you know what i mean because well, of all the fucking diseases they dropped on them americans prove though later on on the japanese themselves that that's not the way to go the way to go is fucking white phosphorus just drop <laughs> white phosphorus that was one of the like ones they that that's thermite was one, that was one fucking, of the ones they did too you, yeah Mm -hmm. The firebombing of fucking Tokyo, man. It killed millions and millions just in a night. More than that damn atomic bomb. That Hiroshima bomb was nothing compared to the firebombing of Tokyo. It took more planes. It took longer. Burned all of fucking Tokyo to down. You guys can look up online. Maybe you can drop it in the comment section. I forgot how many millions, but killed millions, millions of them just on that one night. Just with fucking, I think it was, I think it was fat white phosphorus. The white phosphorus is gelled gasoline. That probably wouldn't have worked in Europe because it was just, those are stone buildings. But Asian buildings at that time were all fucking wood and paper. As soon as you got that bitch burning, the whole thing would burn. Enough, there was enough. Although they did that to Dresden, and the fire storm storm was enough to suck people into the flames. You know, it was a two hundred mile an hour wind sucking people into the fucking flames. That was about as bad as an atomic bomb. So you can do it to a stone city. You just need enough. You just got to get it hot enough. And you can get a city hot if you got enough airplanes. It was another time. It was a fucking another time. The thinking was very different back then. And like I said, even if I had a time machine, yeah, not going back there. No, thank you. Even the dudes dropping the bombs were horrified of the, of the firebombing of Tokyo. As well they should have been. They said they could just smell it. And in, yeah. in their minds, they could hear everybody screaming down in there as they were running those bombing runs. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. Grandther's Hammer said the U.S. has a history of this stuff, too. Tuskegee. Yeah, I actually would like to do a show about that one of these days. Yeah. Uh, the Tuskegee experiments. Look that up if you want to be also horrified at some fucked up shit that we did. Because, uh... Yeah, syphilis we're, test. We're not much better, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, I mean... No, we're better. But not not the same numbers, not the same viciousness. Yeah, and but it was also more piecemeal. It would yeah. kind of come and go. But also we've done similar kind of things, but on a smaller a scale. Smaller scale, and, and a lot of times local governments or, or corporations were involved in it. Yeah. It wasn't so much what the American people were doing. It was just wacko fucking oligarchs and shit were doing weird shit. That goes back to the damn bubonic plague blankets given to the Indians. If you look into the details. A lot of that was railroads doing that. 
Well, yeah, it's like railroads oh, did it. The why are all these it? people dying? Oh yeah. my goodness, how convenient! Now we can buy all this land yeah. that we wanted to put our like railroad across. Yeah, the American people, the American government had nothing to do with it. They didn't even know about it. The British did it too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the the railroad people forgot how powerful the people worried about how powerful big tech is. They're fucking real powerful. But there was a time where the railroad had their own private armies, mm-hmm. their own private court system that would fucking sentence employees to death. Well, yeah. Look what happened then, to a yeah. lot of people that like wanted to like strike for better fucking, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. wages and shit like that. They They're, just like mowed them down. Yeah, and they, they found, got they, done about it. They found long in remote places on these old abandoned railroads, mass graves filled with fucking Irish and Chinese dead from bullet wounds. Buried yep. And no record of what happened. It could have only been a labor uprising, and then they were fucking mowed down by railroad mercenaries, imagine and then just buried. To get, and imagine wanting to get fairly paid for your labor. Yeah, well, it might have not been pay. It might have been food. It might have been. It was something happened. Something happened. There's no record, and we're talking like a couple hundred of them. We're not talking like two or three dudes. Like a yeah. couple hundred. So shit like this happened. Shit like those bitches weird had shit enough money. Here. You have enough money, you can get away with yeah. pretty much anything. Pretty much anything you want. Yeah. Pretty much anything, and that's been true all throughout history, and it is still true nowadays. Yeah, I think big threat. I think big tech is the threat. I just do. It's a mon. It's it's it, it's a monopoly, but this isn't the first one. When it came to physical threat, I would think that the railroads were probably the biggest at one time. The that's biggest what I'm saying. It's like time. a lot of people. Like I think if you have a lot of money, you can still get away with shit nowadays. But I think it's slightly less bad than it used to be. The slightly railroads used bad. to. The railroad, Back then, the they, ra- I mean, if you, yeah, if you owned a railroad. They wiped out whole towns. That's what I mean. You could just operate with impunity and everybody yep. be like, mm, okay. No one would do anything. Yep. They, there was a no time where towns anything. pissed off the railroad and the railroad says, okay, fuck it. We're not stopping here anymore. And then that town is gone. Because yeah. the railroad wouldn't stop there Yeah, anymore. all those people's like gone. Livelihoods. They all had to leave sure. or they died or whatever. They left, I think. Yeah, I mean... That's a lot of power. So, like I said, that's why I don't really complain about stuff nowadays, because I'm like, I, I look back at, na- at back then, I'm like, yeah, stuff sucks now, but... You have you have recourse, you have a way to stop them. Yeah, I would not have wanted to live back then. And at least now you know, you have access to information, you know yeah. what's happening. Back then, they didn't even know. No, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't on. even know what was going on. They didn't have an internet, they didn't have... And like the I said... The newspapers were all yellow they didn't have any. Yeah, they didn't have any recourse. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least nowadays you have different channels that you can like, yeah. you know, go through crowdsourced you, information. I mean, it might not still might not work out for you and it, it probably won't, but it's better than it used to be. Yeah. A lot better. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's, and, and really it has nothing to do with governments or laws or anything. What it is, is it's better now because the average person has access to technology that, that past generations could have only dreamed of. Right. Technology gives you power. Not really laws or governments. Well, I mean, nowadays, everybody that can afford an internet connection Can't has essentially their own printing press. Yeah. 3D printers. Fucking crowdsourced information. Internet. Fucking um, just guns. Uh, the, the, the ability to get knowledge to grow food. Uh, it's just cryptocurrencies. There's just so many ways around. That's what I mean. See, this things. is why, this is what, what I was telling you earlier. This is what I'll bitch about stuff nowadays because I'm like, look, I've read a lot about like the way shit was back then. I would not go back to that. No yeah. fucking way. No fucking way. You, could be, you can find out anything you need to know yeah. in seconds yeah. nowadays. You could be free back then, though, too. You could get a horse and ride out and fucking live like Jeremiah Johnson. But the thing is, is only certain people can do that. You know what I mean? And only certain people would be happy doing that. You can live in a town, and in a, in a suburban town, and have access to, to to everything now. And it didn't used to be that way. You could have something delivered to your front fucking door. That's what I mean. Everything's can, like easy now. You can get the same. Clothes. And like I said, I don't think that's bad. No, great. I mean, in some ways, like yeah, stuff shitty. Like yeah, corporations are too big. They have too much power. But that's yeah. always been the case. Yeah. Um, you know, ever since and, the Industrial and, and, Revolution. And, and, and if you look at history, it tends to where their shit gets sorted over time. A lot of times they become obsolete by something else that replaces them. So you can ride it out. That's what and I mean. None, I of those motherfuckers, I'm not about it. none of those motherfuckers are, on, are king of the hill for very long. Yeah, they're that's lucky, what I mean. They're lucky to be king of hill for two decades. 
Usually it's less. Usually it's 10 years. Like I said, I'm just going to like yeah. carve out my own shit. Yeah. With the shit that I have. And a lot of the shit that fucks people up are platforms. And new platforms come online all That's the time. That's what I mean. That's why I don't worry about it. Yeah. That's why I don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, everyone was like, everyone probably flipped out about fucking MySpace back in the old days. MySpace Nobody, is gone. Nobody's on MySpace nowadays. YouTube does fucked up shit. Look at Odyssey. Look at BitChute. There's options. You don't have to fucking live on YouTube. That's what I'm, well, yeah. that's what I mean. It's like, that's why I don't get like all the pissing and moaning. It's yeah. like, if you don't like it, just go. Just some, there's other places. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can yep. find shit you like. People are getting hit hip to it. Same thing with fucking crypto. It's going to be, mad. It's gonna be mad. fucking, you're having countries now. Venice, I think, what, what, Honduras, I think, says, accepts crypto. You're going to start seeing fucking Bitcoin, which will get around bankers. And banks have for forever. It goes all the way back to fucking, going all the way back to Abraham Lincoln. He was worrying about the po- he was warning people about the powers of banks and banking cartels, and uh, I, they're panicking now because they're slowly becoming obsolete. Crypto and, and, and electronic currencies will replace the big heavy power brokers of the past. Well, that's what I mean, I'm always saying. That's why I don't kind of like, I don't like to make any like predictions about yeah. the future and stuff because one, I've seen a lot of sci-fi and none of that shit ever pans out the way they think it's yeah. going to pan out. But also because technology, um, you know, evolves in a way that not a lot of people can predict. And we don't actually yeah. know how shit's going to turn out or what, you know, what the end game of like a lot of stuff yeah. Because there's like a lot of stuff that nobody intended and it yeah. was just kind of like, oh, this was a surprise. How did this? If you look at The Shining, you know, fucking our boy, our boy put all these hits about, you know, the Federal Reserve and fucking, you know, the upper classes and the banking system, the gold room and all that crap. I think it was Norway. Was it Norway or Denmark, Finland? One, no, one of the ones, one of those Norwegian companies, they got pissed off at the banks 10 something, almost 15 years ago. They said, fuck it. They banned all banks. No banks. They just have a, a damn app, a national bank that's an app on their phone, and that's their bank. It's the, it, it, their country's bank, which is that's what our Constitution says, that Congress should print the money. It really should just be an app. It would put all those banks, banking cartels out of business. Would they get pissed? Yeah, they'd get pissed. A lot of shit would go bad. But there should be a national option. Your country should have its own bank. You don't need private banks, not anymore. That could all be I mean, done that's online. what I'm saying. And it's like, honestly, I just kind of, I like the option of yeah. having private uh, banks, private banks yeah. but also if you want to do the national, and, and yeah. like I said, that's kind of where I'm at with like the healthcare system. Yeah. I really wish that the U.S. had an option. I guess it's better than it used to be, but because, yeah. you know, with, because I don't have any health insurance. I don't know if you guys don't. I haven't had any it's for years and years. It's always fucking designed but to it, fuck you. But it's like, it, it would be nice if you could have an option for... You know, like the UK has the NHS. It'd be nice. And the UK has NHS, but it also has private health care. If you want to, yeah. if you know, they have that option. They should have both. That's what I mean. So that's why I think that's better. Um, you know, I, as far as I know, most of Europe has that. They have a national system. If you want to get on that, you could just pay taxes. You pay into it and it's fine. If you want some other shit, that's it, private insurance. You can buy that, too. We that's kind of have that, fine. though, because some states have that. Yeah, but Florida, Florida, have, Florida doesn't. Florida doesn't have it, but it, no. depends, it's t- it depends on the state. My health insurance plan yeah. is don't get sick, Jenny. Don't get sick. <laughs> That's my health. Go to the emergency room. Has been for the last several years. Go to the emergency room. I haven't had health insurance now. since 2016. How much, is health, how much is health insurance a month? I don't know. Depends. I'm getting older, so it'll probably not get any cheaper, yeah. just saying. Although I'm like, I'm in fairly good health now. So, okay, let's enough, get back to the show. Yeah, so, like I said, so, okay, so where was I? Plague infected, uh, plague infested, blah, 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 fe- fleas, the bubonic plague. So, yeah, there was a bunch of that, killed a bunch of people. Um, also, another thing they would do, super fun, um, they go to Nanking, and they started putting, like, typhoid and paratyphoid into, like, the water supply, you know what I mean? Like in all their yeah. wells and stuff like that. Uh, and honestly, the like the researchers were super, super jacked about this because this turned out super well, putting typhoid into the wells. They were like, ooh, they thought that was like super effective. That was like, that made them very happy. <laughs> this mm. is so fucked up. 
So, uh, as far as they know, there were about a dozen, what they, they called these field trials, which, you know, love that euphemistic language. They called them field trials. That was when they essentially either bombed the area with plague ridden bugs or put diseases into the water supply of whatever the city was. Um, so they think that there were at least 11 cities in China attacked with biological agents. Um, so like I said, they estimate that uh, at least one attack, the city of uh, Changda, that was about 10,000 casualties there with a disease that they uh, dropped on there. Also, I think I brought this up earlier, uh, killed 1,700 Japanese troops because they also drank the water. I, I think Damn. this one was cholera. Yeah. That was like one. Because like I said, they, they were trying all kinds of diseases. They're like, okay, what are we what are we gonna do today? Let's do botulism today. That'll be fun. Let's do let's do bubonic plague today. Let's do cholera. Let's do smallpox. Why not? We got all the diseases. Let's put it in somebody's water right. and see what shakes out. I just I just kinda feel like that's that's what they were doing. They're coming into work and did the God, this is so fucking fucked up. So yeah, so they put, they either put stuff into the water supply or they would put stuff in these like ceramic encased bombs, essentially, like a flea, like a flea bomb and they would drop it on the city and like the fleas would bust out and then they would like give people diseases and like thousands and thousands of people would die. So, you know, uh, also another fun thing they would do was that they would, um, drop food and clothing into areas of China that were not presently occupied by the Japanese, uh, which were also infested with disease. So, you know, that's also fun. Uh, they would also go, they wanted that personal touch, I guess. So they would just go house to house or down the street and give people like poison candy. So, you know, like I said, it's like a fucking urban legend about Halloween or some kind of shit like that. Let's, get, let's, let's put some razor blade in the candy and like give him some, what the fuck? What the fuck? This is killing me. So, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, because of, uh, as a result of all these shenanigans, Japan thought, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put bubonic plague in some bombs and we're going to drop these bombs on San Diego. Okay, yeah. They were going to do that uh, in late September of 1945, but Japan uh, had surrendered like yeah. before that, but they were totally going to do it. I know what they were talking about. They were totally going to do it. What they were going to do is they had a couple of submarines that were wide enough to carry two airplanes in them. Weird, but yeah, they had aircraft carrier submarines and that's what they were going to do. They must have put bio bombs in Thank those you, David submarines June. and uh, unleash them planes. You can look that up. It's pretty neat. It was a submarine front end of it would open up. There'd be there were seaplanes on there, and they could ride out. And they're on pontoons. They were kind of like a like a zero, like a Japanese zero, and they could fly out and drop some bombs. That's what they were gonna do. They were gonna take out the Panama Canal with that shit. Yeah, I think they tried, if I remember correctly. They had big plans. Yeah. Didn't the Japanese come, got tied up though. They didn't, didn't come to pass, obviously. <laughs> yeah, they. They knew they couldn't beat us. Not in the long run. They thought that they would, if they uh, destroyed the Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor, that we would cut and run. Hirohito says, no, nah, that's not what will happen. You know, he goes, they will fucking fight back. It'll take them a few years. They might kind of lose for the first two years. But then while they're back there in America building the new Navy, two years later they'd come back here and fucking we'll fight them and then we will lose two years after that. And that's exactly what happened exactly what happened our old navy and our old fucking marines didn't do well for the first two years against the japanese yeah but when the new shit was ready man they could not adapt fast enough because our, our planes were far better than theirs the new generation that came out to you was far better than theirs the carriers and a lot of the ships and shit and just the training and the quality of the men was just a lot better two years after the war started we got stronger as it went on. They were getting weaker. They just couldn't, they didn't have the industrial might to change fast enough. We just overwhelmed them. 
Their yeah. planes were just fucking sitting ducks after that new generation came out. When the Corsair was out, the fucking Hellcat, I think it was a Hellcat. Yeah, Hellcat. It was an aircraft carrier plane. That was it. It was through. Through. They couldn't deal with that. Japanese planes just weren't good enough. Not enough armor. Not enough guns. Thank Our planes you. are flying tanks compared to theirs, but when, when the new planes came out. Thank you, David June. If yeah. we died and went to a Matrix existence, how would BTK survive without killing? Would they put killers in a world where they can kill anyone or torture by us? I kind of feel like they should take the serial killers and just put them in their own little virtual world. You know, like Grand Theft Auto. You can go in there and you can, like, kill people with impunity, but they're not real people. They're just, like, NPCs. I don't know. A serial killer is mostly, he's mostly imagination. Imagination and fantasy. He may already be in a world like that inside of his head. Well, so put him in one yeah. of those literally. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. As long as he were to believe the illusion, he'd be happy, probably. Put him in the soup and, like, hook him up yeah. to the shit. I'm, I'm cool with that. It's part of their sexual orientation. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> Although, you know, most most people who've studied it, including serial killers themselves, you know, when they hit adrenopause, when they get about 50, they slow down a lot. They become kind of like has-beens. They don't have the energy to go out and kill some chick. It just doesn't... It's just not as exciting like it was. So... You, should you can't be a serial killer forever, even in heaven. You should read um, a novella that I bought yeah. too long ago, not too long ago, that I reviewed on my channel called Larry. Yeah. And it's about like a Jason style serial killer who was doing yeah. shit in the 70s. And then now like he's really old and he lives with his mom and shit. Yeah. And but he's like 65. But he's like, man, I need to get back out there and like kill some teenagers. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> It's so fucking funny. Yeah, I reviewed it not too long ago. Uh, but yeah, Adam Millard wrote it. He's a British writer. Uh, Grimther's Hammer said, One could argue that America is in conducting its own sick experiment via 32-ounce Mountain Dews and supersized fries with a bacon cheeseburger. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like people want that, but... One more time? Are you okay, Pook? I think she's asking to go outside. Does she have her clothes on? No, I have to put her collar on. Put her clothes on. Yeah, she's going, come on, let's go outside. Okay, you be good, though. Don't you go far. Well, pokey. Yeah, it's, you know. That's the thing. I don't know if it's any kind of, like, um, you know, any kind of, like, conspiratorial, hey, let's kill everybody with, like, fucking heart disease. But because the human body does crave fat and sugar. It just does. It tastes good. It, you know, that's, that's just how we evolved. So I think all it is, I don't think anyone's just like has a plan to like exterminate everybody. I just kind of think that, well, we just want to make some money and humans really like fat and sugar. So we're just going to like put more of that and it'll taste like really good. So everybody will buy it. So I think that's the only thing that's going on. But yeah, so like I said, they were going to, uh, Japanese were going to, like, drop some plague on San Diego. But they never got to, fortunately, uh, because they surrendered five weeks before their planned shit. But uh, one thing they did do was that uh, in various Chinese cities, they dropped a bunch of, like I said, fleas with bubonic plague. They also dropped in a bunch of clothes and a bunch of, like, just various supplies, food and stuff like that, that had different things on it. You know what I mean? It had, like, anthrax or cholera, or whatever. And this ended up killing almost half a million Chinese civilians. So, you know, uh, there's so there's that whole thing. Here's another thing they were doing, too, was that they were testing, or so they said, they're like, we want to know what would happen. <laughs> like I said, this is like them showing up at work and being like, what do you think would happen if we blew up a grenade? Like, right, it's like jackass. Like, I know that's, like, fucked up to say, but it's, like, it's, like, fucking jackass. They show up at work, and they're just kind of, like, what would happen if we blew up a grenade 10 feet from a person or 5 feet from a person? Let's let's find out how that would happen. Go get me some logs, and we'll figure out, uh, you know, what shit will happen. So what they would do was they would bring people in, and they would put the prisoners in different like distances and different positions away from where 
the grenade explosion was going to be because they wanted to see how it would affect their body. You know, they were measuring the uh, effective rate, the blast radius of the grenade. Yes. Yeah. Also, they would also test their flamethrowers right. on the people. So that's nice. Uh, so yeah. So basically, they would tie their prisoners to you know stakes, just tie it to a stake, and they would either hit you with a flamethrower to see what would happen. Uh, I'm pretty sure what would happen in that situation. Uh, or they would just blow up stuff at different distances yeah. from the people. This looks like to see what would happen. This looks like the stuff that the North Koreans were showing in the War Crimes Museum. I think that's what yeah. <laughs> it was. That kind of shit. There were people tied up to stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This is the sh kind of shit they were doing. Yeah. Uh, and they their justification for it was. Well, when our guys get hit with bombs and like get hit with shrapnel and stuff, we want to see like what's the best way to treat that, or right. you know what happens like at different distances with the with the fragmentation. How good is the fragmentation? Right. right. Um. So that's kind of like what they were going for, right. or so they said. Like I said, I think this was like no. That's probably about up. right. Here, let me let me explain something to somebody to you guys. In a grenade, in a grenade, you've got a fucking body that makes shrapnel. In those days, it was usually cast iron, and it was kind of like in a pineapple pattern. And you put something like TNT or some kind of plastic explosive. Was that her? She didn't want to, in there. <laughs> she didn't want to go blow out. It up. No, she, no, she false call, false alarm. She goes out there and goes, nope. <laughs> Too hot. And then you set that off. And what they wanted is they wanted it to break upon, break along the little lines in the in, in, in the pineapple pattern and throw out a fucking nice, even distribution of shrapnel. But that's, that's never what happened. Usually the bitch broke in half, and only two pieces went flying. So the grenades weren't very effective, especially those kind of grenades. But they weren't very effective. So they were trying to figure out the blast would kill a guy if it landed close, but normally the frag the shrapnel didn't. Usually the shrapnel missed you from those old grenades. Although back in that grenades in those kind of grenades' favor, they were usually thrown into holes or thrown into the back of fucking fighting positions where it was pressurized so the blast would kill you because it was in an enclosed area 